Good morning. It is time to skip the BS, time for undisputed, time to talk more wacky Jerry Jones quotes, and Golden State threatening to fall out of the play-in tournament, and the Chiefs giving away the NFL's best cornerback, and Dion saying he's ready to pull in Eli with Shadur. Woo! All that's coming up, but let me first say good morning to Keyshawn Johnson. Good morning to Paul Pierce. Good morning, man. Right, Skip. All right, here we go. First up, Lakers barely survive at home. Pacers love to come uh, back on the Lakers here in L.A. Last year, if you recall, they were down 17 with nine minutes left and one at the buzzer on a Nimhard three over LeBron. This time, the Pacers cut a 19-point lead to three with 21 seconds left, but the Lakers hung on to win by five, and well, hey, the Lakers have won three in a row, last night scoring a season-high 150 points with four players with 25 or more points, all that without D'Angelo Russell. Lakers announced before the game he was sick, but that was the first time the Lakers have scored 150 since 1987. That was even before you were born, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> so 87, that's yeah. a lot of points in 87. A lot of points for showtime. Okay, Paul Pierce, y you don't see these Lakers getting out of the play-in, but anything impress you about them last night? Yeah, I was impressed that they, was, that they had the ability to put up 150, but yep. Indiana forces you to play that way. I feel like every time I watch them, the score is just the numbers. It's always going to be the over. With they it. push they it. Don't, they yeah. don't play any defense. Yeah. They get up and down the court. But, you know, I, I, lately I have been impressed with the Lakers. I mean, they won three in a row. And when I look at their up-and-coming up schedule, they go on a row for six games. And, and they could possibly win. They should win four of the next six on yeah. the road. When I look at it, you got Milwaukee. Yeah, I don't I, know if I, they can I, win I in don't Milwaukee. Think they can win that. Memphis, yeah. they should win. Indiana to be although, another dog Although fight. at Memphis is a back-to-back, -back, so will LeBron and AD I'm play? I'll okay. rest in versus Milwaukee. Okay. All right. I mean, oh, I'm, you would. You I just give rest, it. Okay, I'll just give rest it up. in versus Milwaukee. All right. I don't need to go into a war and say, all right, we need to get Memphis. All right. Dog fight with Indiana. Yep. They should beat Brooklyn, Toronto, and Washington. They which, should. Which are tanking Agreed. at this point. Agreed. And so I like where they at. Winning three in a row, they should win the next four out of six. And so that's what you need coming down the stretch. You need to gather momentum. Yep. You need to play with confidence and, and start getting into a rhythm. I like what AD has been doing. He's been consistent lately. You know what LeBron's going to be. But the most important thing is that they're getting the other players involved. You're allowing Spencer Dinwiddie to go out here and shine. Austin Reeves, and if the Lakers are going to do anything in the playoffs, these guys got to have a rhythm. Yep. They got to have the ball. And if they continue to do that, they got a shot in, in a playoff, in a play-in. To, to make it to the playoffs. And so I, I So like you're revising your look yeah, at them? I'm revising yeah. my look because yeah. I have to look at the schedule. All right. You know, and I look, it's, it's, it's very favorable to them. And I like what they, you got to get these wins. Now, if they come off this road trip and say go two and four, I'm not so confident in them. But as a But you got stands, them four and two losing at them. Milwaukee and at Indiana next at Friday Milwaukee, night. Milwaukee, yeah. Okay. They'll lose those two. And they should win the rest. So that's that's a pretty good. So now you're looking at winning seven out of the next nine games down the stretch. And so I'm pretty bullish on the Lakers uh, at this point in the season, especially after last night. You know, uh, when I looked at them last night, Paul, when I looked at them, better yet, I like the fact that Anthony Davis could take advantage of a little smaller front. You know, not not as long and as big. He I does. Miles that. Turner's not tiny. I yeah, mean. but they but across the board though, they're not as big no. as some of the other teams that he has struggled against. When you look at him, so he was able to dominate. But the, the Spencer did what he taken over at the last minute for D'Angelo Russell and getting into the twenty point category, yeah. shooting the ball well. He had five assists, so you like everything that he was. I think his season high was eleven so far. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. but you bring yeah. everything. You see what he can bring to the table. Skip. I so agree. now you say to yourself, okay. Here's another guy who's getting the opportunity to showcase his skills. LeBron only shot the ball 19 times. So that's, that's, well, Paul, only, that's, well, well that's pointing yeah. to what you're saying. Yes, it is. He, 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 I say only 19. If he's into the mid-20s, right. you know, now you're taking opportunities away from everybody That's else. He had 10 assists. better when he's allowing these other guys to get opportunities. And I he mean, did have 10 assists. He had 10 assists, assists which, which, is, which is key. It is. Key. You know, and then when you talk about just overall – 
them not really ne- necessarily pulling away. They was up by the 19 late in the game, but they didn't pull away. Like, they didn't just – they didn't pull away. They allowed Indy to still kind of hover around, but they closed in the end. And I think what, one of the problems that the Lakers have always had, in particular against, like, the Denver Nuggets or Golden State, when them last four or five minutes of game start to come around, Sacramento, they tend to di- disappear on both ends of the floor. Now, speaking to – Speaking to Paul's question in the remaining part of the schedule, I'm certainly playing everybody against the Milwaukee Bucks. No. And the reason I'm playing against the Milwaukee Bucks is because we need to gauge ourselves against real competition. Okay, we need to figure it out. Now, excuse me, now we can rest them on a back-to-back against Memphis and get them back again against Indianapolis, even though Indianapolis, Indy, even though you've beaten them and you've shown you can beat the Pacers, Last night or whether in the in-game tournament, you, you, you still are on the road now. So now yep. you bring them back, rest them against Memphis, which is a shorthanded team. You take your top players and rest them. Now you get them back against Indiana. Then you say, okay, Brooklyn, Toronto, Washington. And now you start to look, okay, we can now look up because we come back home against the Cleveland Cavs, which is a pretty good team. Now they're rested enough. When you come home to take care of business against Cleveland, that's the way if I was coaching them in the rotation, that's the way if I would do re- it. If you're wrestling versus Memphis, that's not going to be a gimme win. I understand that, but I'd rather, I'd rather pop Milwaukee. That's going to be a schedule loss. And I would rather, I'd rather pop, before. but I'd rather pop Milwaukee and pop Indy. Memphis is, they're, they're not going anywhere, so you might as well just let them rest. By the way, the Thunder played all their guys last night at Milwaukee and got annihilated oh, in the third quarter. They got it was close at halftime, and that's. But wouldn't you rather? Wouldn't time. you want to gauge yourself at this, in this stage? Right at this stage, I'm like, we, we're playing playoff position and health. So you we, worried we, about the playoffs? We're not even worried, worried about, about Milwaukee right now because we we don't have to see them in the playoffs unless we get to the finals, and, and, and they're there. So we don't need we don't need them problems right now. Well, you're not going to see you not going to see LeBron, any of these I'll, teams. I'll, I'll sit LeBron at least versus Milwaukee. Play AD. Mm. Let him match up against the Greek Freak. Okay, I, I'll we'll do play, that. Oh, okay, we'll at. play AD then. But I know we have to get Memphis the next mm. night, which is a back to back, and I don't want Bron playing back to back nights this late in the season. No, we have to get yeah. that game right there. That's so on the you, calendar. So, I'm like, so would you rest? A or LeBron against Milwaukee yep. and AD against Memphis. I can do that. And bring them both I, back against the back, Both back versus Indy. And then we can rest them again in Toronto because Toronto not looking like they're trying to win at this stage in the, in the season anyway. Yeah. So it's, it's ways that you could kind of manage them down the stretch with this long road trip. But even, even, even the next five after that is going, Cleveland going to be hell. Minnesota, we just saw what they did to Golden State late in the game. Mm-hmm. It was tough, but we know what they could do. Then you got Golden State. All three of those games at home, then you go to Memphis, and then you end with New Orleans. And who knows, at, except uh, April 14th, where the play-in opportunities are going to be. They yeah. might be in the 10th, the 9th. Who knows, with Houston hanging around and Golden right. State may be out of there at some point, Skip. Yeah. All right. What impressed me by far the most last night was <coughs> Anthony Davis mm-hmm. did show way up. Way up. Because this is monster stuff. When he makes 15 of 21 shots and he has 16 rebounds and scores 36 points, that, that's the kind of production that can take you far into the playoffs. If, if you can get that on a nightly basis from that guy, nobody else really has that except Joker and whoever, you know. Giannis. The healthy MVP, Giannis. 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 Yeah, those two. But listen. Miles Turner can block shots. He he got ragdolled last night. He he got embarrassed. Yeah. He he could not begin to slow down or or bang or hang with Anthony Davis. And yet Anthony Davis was the first to speak up and speak out after the game and I loved him for this. He said we allowed them to score 145 points. It was terrible defensively. We can't do that. So the the point is it was a classic are we there yet game again for the Lakers because they they flex and they show you their firepower even without D'Lo and they have not won a game all year without D'Lo. They're 0-5 without D'Lo and they finally won a game without him because to your point, Key, Dinwiddie stepped up, but he's he, he's capable. He's done this at Dallas and he did this at Brooklyn. You could see he and he's not an all-star, but he's a mm-hmm. he's a 
He's a decent NBA player when called upon, and he's an L.A. area kid. He, he's loving this. This is a, a big stage for him. And he showed up and showed way out last night when called upon. And that was key for, for the future of this team, the near future. So the point is that they play three quarters of decent defense against a team that just pushes it like crazy. They're the number one offensive team in the league because they're going to shoot it the most and they're not going to play any defense. It's all offense and no defense. But the Lakers... We saw them in the, the in-season tournament championship game at Las Vegas. They, they held this team to 109 points because AD just said, you can't come in here. Mm-hmm. And all of them locked down. Halliburton had, didn't have a good game. He didn't have a good game last night until the bitter end, and he made two really late threes that got him up to 12 points. So they did a good job on him, but everybody else was scoring like crazy. And I okay, so they're ranked 16th defensively. That that's the problem. That that's why they're still just sort of teetering along mm-hmm. in the ninth spot because they they don't play much defense either. They play more than Indiana does, but they don't play much defense. And the thing that's scary though is when AD gets in the early foul trouble. That was that was you know he had three fouls early last night. So I was like, mm-hmm. what's going to happen? But he only picked up another one and he was able to finish. But when he gets in an early foul trouble, Paul, Mm -hmm. that could present a problem for us from a front-line standpoint. All right. But, by the way, Rick Carlisle, after the game, was not happy about the free-throw discrepancy because your Lakers shot 43 free-throws and did make 38 of them. I was going to say that. And the visitors shot 16 uh,16 free-throws and made nine of them. So yeah, LeBron made all his, didn't he? Yeah. Did but, he make all of them, Skip? Let me yeah. look. Let me see. Yeah, eight for eight, right? There. Eight for eight. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm just bringing that up to Skip. Okay. Skip says right, he's a right. terrible free right. throw shooter. He's a so. terrible free throw shooter. <laughs> he's 73 percent for his career. Is that good, Paul? I was I about to ask you, what that. was yours? Was 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 81, 80, 81. I'll take that over 73 any day. <laughs> So, Keyshawn, what do I keep telling you about who the closer for this team has to be? It's your favorite player, Austin Reeves. What did he do last night? In the last 40 seconds, he made all six of his free throws. And they needed all six of them because Indiana will not quit. Rick Carlos says, I got a team with a big heart, and they do have heart. So if we could see Halliburton finally got going, if we could see the two threes he made, you can say he pulled him out of his you-know-what, but this is what he does occasionally. He shoots that funky set shot. So here's Halliburton, and it seems like the game's over, and LeBron kind of loses him, and kaboom. And then here we go again, and Austin Reeves Ooh. loses him, and it's that thing boom. Like a rainbow. Yeah. Man. Yeah, huh. these, these are <laughs> bombs. And yet, and still, I'm going to give LeBron big credit for this because they got one last shot at it with what time was left. Uh, it's, it's the final three points, 11 seconds left. They, they had a shot to cut it to one, and here it is to Halliburton, and LeBron did a nice job there. At least he closed him out a little bit and got a hand in his face. Yeah, those, first two, six foot nine. those first two threes, he didn't even bother. He didn't bother. Like... But the thing about Halliburton, is <laughs> jumper kind of funky, but it go in, so you don't really respect it. No. So you kind of like, if he's shooting that deep, you're like, all right, go ahead. But he's shown that he can okay, make this but, shot. But you just called it a jumper. He does not jump to yeah, shoot I mean, the ball. He, he just, just he his just feet are on the floor. It seems like yeah. he just slings but it up there. But if you know it's going in, a lot of the times. Why I mean, he's you? been struggling too lately. So okay. you're not really like he had a good game his last game. But okay. like over the course of since All-Star break, he kind of been struggling. And so you kind of hesitate when a guy is six feet off the three-point line shooting from that deep. And I, and I knew where LeBron was coming from. Like, oh, we'll take that. You know, he with only, us. So he with us. There's only one guy, two guys in the league that's consistently knocking that shot down. And that's Steph and Dame Lillard. So you kind of like, I'll kind of give it to him if he was one more step in. You know, but those shots from Halliburton, you kind of will take. But if he hits them, it's like hat off. Yeah. Well, he shoots rainbows, man. Yeah. I mean, and it's funky, too. I, it I mean, I know funky. if I was guard, I'd be like, uh, go, uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And then we hit him, you're like, I should have got there. Yeah. So, again, he hits those two late threes to get him all the way up to 12 points for the game. Right. So when he made them, he had six points exactly. for the game. So you're and like, you're, you're thinking, not... well, he's just out of it. You know, right. Yeah, see, because no right here, what I'm saying, Paul, see, he kind of, like, I'm kind of like, like hesitating in between. Yeah, I mean, he's struggling. So why wouldn't you want to give it to him then? He, yeah, right he's here, open, he never even. He's open four in the game until these two. LeBron didn't even fight through the Right. Pain. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I get where he was coming okay. from with that. You're playing a percentage. 
Now, and just for fun, I got to show my man Keyshawn one more oh, Austin God. Reeves play. Here we go. We, we gotta, it's not a LeBron play. It's an Austin Reeves play. All right, play. all right. Yeah, this is with a minute and 40 left. He gets beat by uh, the block. Neesmith, and he comes from behind him, and he snakes him and gets it. He gets in from behind. And it was, it was a pretty good play. play. It was a pretty good play. He could have gave up right here. He could have just uh, gave up, but he didn't. For a guy who can be a defensive liability on occasion. No, he gave up. He, yeah. he, no, he, got, he played with high energy, he played, though, He played Skip. with effort. He, you know, he played with effort and high energy. Not a great defender, but if you continue to play with effort, you yes, know. You that's all it so, takes. So he a just, hustle man. He, he yeah. overachieves. He's Charlie Hustle. Man, right? there ain't nothing okay. wrong with it. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing. Look, if you Charlie Hustle and you yeah. knock it down, you're getting 25 points and you 13, uh, 6 or 13, and you uh, uh, 11 or 12 from the free throw line, and you're doing everything you're supposed to do. You're going to keep getting a check. You know, another thing that stands out to me is he had eight assists. And he had so, eight assists. So, you know what that means? LeBron is allowing him to make plays. He's allowing him to get the ball and, and create for others. And, and that's all I said from LeBron. You know, I, if he can allow the other guys to, to come in here and, and help him out and allow him to do playmaking abilities, him and Dinwiddie, I think it makes them a better team. But if he's, you know, kind of like his usage is up and he's always on the ball, yep. it, it just takes away with the capabilities of this team can be. Mm-hmm. Dinwiddie takes over for D. Russ. You know, Russ is, you know, he's had a nice year. He's yeah. scoring a lot of points yeah. and whatnot. Does this turn into a maybe he goes and comes off the bench and you start Dinwiddie? No. No, you don't do after one game, Key. It's one game. It's one game sample well, size against, against a team who can't, no, I understand. who can't guard me today. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Okay, I just I'm just asking the question. I don't know. I'm asking you because you would know better than me no, no, on how this yeah. basketball the good goes. Thing, the state. good thing about Dinwiddie having a game like this is like, all right, he's trying to figure out who he is in this lineup. He said it before. He doesn't know. You know, it's hard playing. You know, when you're an adjustment, making it coming to a team that's late in the league, it gives him confidence now. So now he comes out, he has a great game. So now when he comes back to the bench, he knows, you know what he's capable of. Okay. In a playoff setting to where if D'Lo gets into foul trouble. You know you could boom, you know you put can him in. Put him in, and now he's gaining some trust amongst his teammates. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So, Keyshawn. Yes, sir. Uh, that's interesting. Huh. How many free throws did LeBron shoot in the fourth quarter after you were raving about him? No, I don't hmm. know. How many did he none. shoot? None. He shot none. Yeah, you know I'm why? Look at it. The designated. I'm just saying, eight to eight, man. The <laughs> designated free oh, throw. Oh, God. Shoot. Here, Reeves. Take the Here. ball. LeBron's scared. He don't want to shoot the fourth because quarter. Because they That's know somebody's going to get fouled. Let's inbound the ball to Austin Reeves so he can get fouled and he'll go to the other end and go <laughs> swish, dude. swish, and we'll be this okay. Dude. Uh. He'll say anything. No, I'm not saying anything. It happens every night. You say, oh, doesn't you're not happen seeing every night. It's happening. Yeah, smartest thing to do since yeah. he shoots a high percentage from yeah. free throw. He does. He does. All right. So, Paul, so have you amended your position on this team? Are you ready to say they're going to make some kind of playoff run? Can you see uh, them getting out of a round of the playoffs? It depends. I think this playoffs is all going to be about matchups. You know, if they end up with Denver, no shot. If they have to see OKC, I think they may have a chance. I mean, you're talking about OKC, who's young. Uh, they just don't have no playoff experience. They don't. You know, they and haven't played any big The Lakers games. have handled them twice this year. So whenever yeah, we yeah. run up against Denver, you're projecting we're going home. Oh, man. You might whenever be, we run up against if, if them. If they come out with this, when, it, when it's all said and done and you got to go to Denver, before game one, you can start making vacation plans. If it's okay, Denver. I just wanted to, but if you see Oklahoma to hear or even... Minnesota. Minnesota, I agree. I'm like, all right, that's a good matchup for the Lakers because these guys haven't played in, on the big stage yet. They haven't played any meaningful playoff games yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. when you get out on a big stage to where now national televised game, y'all the only game on where LeBron and AD have been in the light. You know, this is this. You know, the lights get bright when you look up on that big stage, and you, sometimes they can't see. <laughs> and I can see that happening to these youngsters. I just seen OKC get blown out in Milwaukee. Blown. Big game. Yeah. It's a measuring stick game at the end of the year, and you get blown out on, in Milwaukee, and that's you, not you a sign why? of a team that's a contender. Chet, Chet Holmgren got annihilated by Giannis. Yeah. I mean, really punished Absolutely. by him. Absolutely. Yep. So I, I can just see the Lakers, if they get the right seed and the right matchup in the first round, they can get out. All right. I wish they had Jared Vanderbilt. I wish they had Gabe Vinson. Christian Wood wouldn't hurt. But it sounds like even if they come back, they won't. Maybe Jared Vanderbilt could help some as a defensive mm. specialist. But the point is, 
to Keyshawn's point about Denver, yeah, they've lost eight straight times to Denver, but mm-hmm. six of the last seven times it went to the right. wire. Mm-hmm. So it's not like Sacramento, because Sacramento just owns the Lakers, and every game is a wipeout. Every game is a wipeout. <laughs> they, they just can't play with Sacramento. I don't know why, although I would suggest no, right. in a playoff game. Yeah, for in some, a playoff reason, game, they, some reason, I don't know if it's Mike Brown and his defense maybe. understanding how to play them, but for some reason, what is it, Skip? We lost seven of the last eight? Seven of the last well, they eight. They struggle against quicker teams. Think about it. They don't have an answer for De'Aaron Fox yeah, at all. Yeah, when you got quick yeah. point guards who yeah. can consistently get into the lane, that's where the tr- Lakers have trouble and find open shooters. Like me playing on an older team. We hated playing young teams. You know, we were good. We, we liked it. We're playing veteran teams that didn't push the pace like they do, that didn't have quick guards that can dissect your, the middle of your defense mm-hmm. and find open shooters. Yeah. And so that's a terrible matchup when you have these quick guards who can come in there against the Laker guards and make plays for others. You don't want, you don't want to play against that pace. But first, Skip, pay some bills. How hard is it to defend a left-hand shooter when you don't see left-hand shooters that often? I mean, it's like facing a left-hand boxer when you yep. watch it on TV. You just not that's nothing you're not used to because you're always taught to send your guy to the left. Yeah. You know, you're always taught to send him on the pick and roll left, shade him left. But when you got a lefty who's out there who just Goes left and finishes, and he can go right. It's unorthodox yeah. to what we're what you're used to playing. That's right. what I figured. Final thought about the Nuggets: the Lakers do match up great with the Nuggets because they don't have a young electric point guard. Exactly. But <laughs> they don't match up well with them in the last two minutes. All those games because Joker and Jamal just say we got this, mm. and they close better than the Lakers close in six of the last seven games. Yeah, I mean Denver. They know, they know who they are. They do. They, they know they who do. they are. Yeah. It, it's like, Skip, it's like the Lakers versus Denver is like big brother versus little brother. You just let them shoot, and you think it's closer than what it really is, but they always find a way to win. And being close doesn't mean nothing as long as Denver knows that at the end, we know we can beat them, and we know what opportunities we can take advantage so of. So LeBron can. is little brother against Denver. Against Denver. That's their big brother. Mm. Or like Denver says, who's your daddy? Yeah, it was like, who's your Lakers, daddy? Lakers that's that's their motto. That's, Kobe and Paul, and Paul no, it wasn't none of that. Brother, it wasn't, we was never little you know? brothers. We, we were 13 points up in the fourth quarter. Uh, 2010, till we got whistled to death, 20 ah, free throws, 20 free throws. Aha. Uh-huh. I don't want to hear all that. Wheelchair. No, nah, that was that was strictly for that, that was strictly for the for the for the movies right there. Man, so, uh, the wheelchair. Uh, yeah, I still got it in my trophy case too. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, I got the wheelchair. You want, uh, Which you want game to, was that? Game one. Game, game one. Game one. Okay, right. one. Matter of fact, I I need to bring it on the show and sit in it. Yeah, you should. You should come right out here and sit. <laughs> yeah. Oh right. my god. Okay, up next, we got to talk my Cowboys because we got more wacky Jerry quotes driving me nuts. That's next. Jerry Jones spoke to reporters yesterday at the NFL owners meeting. And as usual, much of what Jerry said left me saying, what? Let me read you the two Jerry quotes that most left me shaking my head. Jerry said... We get to be the world champion of how it works when you don't have as much money. But make no mistake about it, with every tool we got, we're all in. We are all in. As a matter of fact, this is rolling the sleeves up and more all in here than we were last year or the year before. It can impact us for, in some cases, five years down the road. Oh, no, more of that all in phony baloney from Jerry. Then there was this Jerry quote about obviously having overpaid Ezekiel Elliott. What I can do for our fans is I can learn from what we did with Zeke. I can learn. I can look back and make that comparison. And I'm more likely to learn from that than some new face. I really am. I believe that as long as I do my homework and I got my energy. Huh? (laughs) <laughs> Sounds like Jerry's responding to critics or maybe just responding to me when I say it's time for Jerry to fire himself as general manager, something he'll obviously never, ever do. OK, Keyshawn, before I launch on all this, I'll give you a chance to try to translate these Jerry quotes. What's your reaction? Same thing I already told you for the last several months is that when you are looking to pay some players, you got to project beyond this season. 
where are you going to be three, four, five years from now? Where are those players mm-hmm. going to be three, four, five years from now? If we bring in all these players and we pay all this money, we got our own players that we need to play. Now we bring in Skip Bayless off the streets. We pay him. We don't address our own guys three years from now. We stuck in salary cap hell and we hadn't won these championships. Mm. That's essentially what Jerry is trying to say. He's just doing it a different way than what you're probably accustomed to hearing. <clears throat> I clearly understand what he's saying. When you look at Dak Prescott eating up 21% of the salary cap, then you start to get into the lighter numbers of guys like Demarcus Lawrence at close to 8%. Then C.D. Lamb at close to 7 on a team-friendly uh, fifth-year option. I say team-friendly because he's supposed to be making way more money than what the option says. And then you start to look at some of the other guys and Zach Martin, he counts for 6% of your salary cap. Then you talk about Michael Parsons around 6% of your salary cap without a new deal. Trayvon Diggs on the shelf, 6% of your salary cap, hadn't played at all this past season. You start looking at all those things, you start adding that up, and you start saying, how can we make the team better when we have all these other issues that we have to address? You want them to plunge and go get somebody. They can't plunge, Skip, and go get anybody till they address these issues. Now, as far as the Zeke thing goes, it makes me, in my mind, I start saying, well, hell, maybe he is going to let Dak walk after this season. Because if he's listening to people like you, mm. which he's saying he is, listening to the fans, mm. the fans are telling him, you made a mistake with Zeke Elliott, which I don't think he made a mistake with Zeke, because Zeke still performed up until a certain point in time where it didn't work anymore. And you may have given him more money on the back end for our salary cap stuff goes than what you probably should have. But the front side of the contract, I, I would say, was a good deal. So he starts to listen to the fans. If Jerry Jones and anybody start listening to the fans, as they like to say, you'll soon be sitting with them in the damn stands. Mm. You cannot let the fans influence you on what it is that you need to do with your team and paying players. That's So I'm starting to think, well, maybe he maybe he will let him play on the 50 something million dollar cap hit and prove himself, and then he walks out the door, and y'all stuck with a quarterback that's unproven. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to take them in order. I'm going to go back to the world champion quote. So he's speaking of himself as the world champion of how it works when you don't have as much money. Mm-hmm. Does that mean my Cowboys have a smaller salary cap than all the rest of the teams? I think not. I think our cap is just like everybody else's. And it just went up considerably. But he's calling himself a world champion, even though we haven't gotten back to the NFC Championship game in almost 30 years. Well, you are winning consistently how to win when you don't have money to spend. That's what he's saying. Okay. Why do we not have money to spend? Because he's committed so much money, starting with Zeke, to Zeke. And by the way, to your Zeke point, remember, Zeke led the league in rushing for three years and went to Cabo and held out, and Jerry caved and gave him the sun and the moon and made him the highest paid running back. It was $15 million a year. This is back in 2019 with 60 guaranteed. And they're still digging out from under that because starting in that 2019 season, He started to hit the wall, the one that he used to run through. He started to run into the wall and it wouldn't budge. And his his yards per carry went down and down. His yards per game went down and down and down. And he became a liability over the last three years that he was a Dallas Cowboy, making the most money of anybody in pro football at that position. So he's still gun shy from that deal. Like, Like, I think he's still fearful of, Derrick Henry for nine guaranteed million. I already made one big mistake. Maybe I shouldn't make that mistake again. Well, Derrick Henry would not have been a mistake. you had to pay Zeke. You had to. Okay. Because the last time you didn't pay a top running back, you were 0-2. Okay. And then when you got that guy in the foes, I understand. But but, but just like you said, though, uh, Skip, you get scared. Well, if I don't pay him, then what? Because the last time I played around with somebody's money yeah. that played that position, it hurt us in the beginning, and all of a sudden we won a world championship. Okay. So I get, where, I get where his mind is at. Okay, but his mind was also <laughs> on this with Zeke. He had become his champion, his yeah. father figure, I'm because sure. all the junk that Zeke went through off the field, Jerry was right there with him, pushing him, fighting for him, paying so lawyers to take him to court. he fell in love with court. him personally. He fell in love with him, and to a fault, 
he overpaid him at a time when a smarter GM would have said, you know what, I, I don't think he's going to last that much longer. Zeke was, as you well know, high it contact. His third year, though, Skip. Yeah. Fourth. This would have been going into his fourth but year. But I'm saying it was, yeah. he finished his third he year. He finished his third year. Yeah, he finished his third year. All right, so Jerry's referring to us as the world champions of how to do it when you don't have money, right? Well, somehow it's your fault you don't have money. You didn't spend it wisely. And by the but way, we're, we're talking about be a cheap. Dak and CD and Micah. And I'll, I'll throw in Trevon Diggs because he obviously yeah. got hurt. But, but especially the big three. Mm -hmm. Where exactly did the big three get me last year? What, what did they do? What, what was their output last year? What did they get you? They did get you 12 wins during the regular season, but they also got your butts kicked at San Francisco and at Arizona and at Buffalo and by Green Bay in a home playoff game when you fell behind 27 to nothing before halftime, which is still inconceivable to me. That's what you got. So he used his quote that we'd heard before. We, we hang around the rim a lot. He uses the basketball analogy. We hang around the rim. So that means we win 12 games and we're kind of hanging around. And we back into the two seed because the Eagles just fall out off the face of the but earth. You, but you hadn't been the two seed since yeah. when? <laughs> I know. And so we had it right in the palms of our when hands. When was the last time you were two seed? The Wade know. Phillips probably? Well, two seed or one. We were the one seed in 2016 when okay, so Dak and Zeke seed. were rookies. Okay, so, yeah. so, you, so when you are hanging around the yeah. rim, so to speak, so to speak, at some point, you're going to put it in the rim. That's all he's saying to you, Skip. Now, how much longer is, does he want to hang around the rim yeah. before he puts it in? Okay. Well, that's the problem. So he's, he's saying we are as all in as – he says we're even more all in than we were the last two years to pay these guys. That's what he's saying, yeah, to pay these guys. These, you're talking about three young players. You know, I, I, Zeke – not Zeke. Um, Dak is still young. He's not old. He's a young quarterback. Yeah, he's for quarterback. He's young. Given the fact QB. that Tom Brady played till he's 45. Well, Aaron yeah. Rodgers and yeah, other yeah, guys yeah. will play, you know, no, that's true. long. And then you still got CeeDee Lamb on his rookie contract. You got Michael Parsons on his rookie contract. You have to eventually address all three of those issues. Even though, Skip, you don't like Dak Prescott, no matter what you say, you're going to be in trouble if you allow him to walk out the door. Yeah, but... I've told you, there are ways to beat this. If you're really good at what you do, you got to get a little bit lucky, but there are ways to just switch horses in midstream. I've seen it happen before. I saw Harbaugh do it in a Super Bowl year, Jim Harbaugh, with San Francisco. I saw what happened. He just said, I got this kid. I'm just going to go with him. Yes, and he was but, completely but unproven, was, and his name is but, Colin Kaepernick. But guess what, though? That was all by default because he got injured. Yeah. If Alex Smith doesn't get injured, no, not really. you're not even looking no. at Colin Kaepernick no, like but, that. But Alex Smith was ready to come back but in. But it's too late. We're already it. rolling. Yeah. Okay. Drew Bledsoe was ready to come back in. But, but the, All right. There's some luck involved. We don't involved. say, no, no, we'll, we'll stick with Tom. Yeah. We're going to stick right here with Tom, Drew. I'm going to hurt your feelings. I get it. But I got something rolling. Okay. The 49ers had it rolling with Jimmy G. They got all the way to the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl up by 10, 20 to yes. 10. They went deep into the fourth quarter. They were still up 20 to 10 with seven minutes left. And after they fell apart, the Shanahan said, and John Lynch said, you know what? He's just not good enough. What? No, it's been so long. Yeah. That was the next year they drafted? Yeah. Um, I believe it was. Trey Lance or the year maybe, after, maybe two was, years maybe, later. It was two years because yes. they, went, they went back to one That's year. what I'm saying. So yeah. they came back with Jimmy and realized yeah. it didn't work. Oh, they, they lost to the Rams. Would that be the next year? Yeah, the, they uh, ran it back again with Jimmy the and realized the at game. that point yeah. they needed a little bit more than what they had. So, but they didn't do it immediately. Okay. They waited. Okay, but they plunged like no one's ever plunged in the draft, and they gave up three Jimmy, firsts. Jimmy Garoppolo went to yeah. the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo ain't nowhere near the quarterback Dak Prescott is, man. And he went to the Super Bowl. And he went to the Super Bowl. That's not true. He, just, he is. He's in the same ballpark with Dak. They're kind of the same I, guy I, to I, me. I don't know why I tee that up to you yeah. for you to – do that, Skip, but he ain't nowhere near. Oh, come on. He's nowhere Boy. near Dak Prescott. He, he beat Dak Prescott in a playoff game at I don't care if he beat Aaron Rodgers in a playoff game at Lambeau. I don't care if he's 10-0 against them combined in his career. Yeah. He ain't better than no damn Aaron Rodgers, and he ain't even close to Dak Prescott.
Period. Ain't close to not Dak even Prescott. close. Have not you close. watched Dak Prescott in the yes, last three playoff losses? Yeah, but that, the team as a whole, though, Skip. He was horrible. He, he stunk didn't play, in those games. He didn't play his best. There's yeah. no question about it. There's no question I mean, about I, it. I've seen him get outplayed, no by, outplayed by Jimmy G head to head. I have. Stop, man. Well, I have. I, Jimmy I saw G made a, a play or two in the game that they beat y'all. Don't don't do this, Skip. Just no, I don't well, act as though. I understand your feelings toward Dak Prescott as a Cowboy fan. Yeah. But don't act like Jimmy G is, is better than Dak Prescott. They, Y'all got something. Don't, but, but don't they, mess they around. Went, they went way farther with Jimmy G than we've ever even dreamed of going with Dak. It's and they said he's not good enough. Team. You know why? Because Bosa, their, their goal Bosa, is to win Super Bowls. Nick Bosa in, in, in company. D'Amador Lenore at the corner spot, mm. Ward at the corner, Warren Fred Warner at linebacker. I could go Armstead in the middle. Those mm. dudes do what they're supposed to do. Mm. Where your guys that at the same position for your team, they don't do what they're supposed mm. to do in the playoffs. You're talking about Michael Parsons? They don't do what they're supposed yeah, to do. So we're going to pay him the most money any defensive lineman you has ever been to. Paid. Oh, so you have to stick with your mediocrity. So now get rid of yeah, Michael Parsons too then, right? All Just right, trade so him what away. What I'm telling you is the Shanahan said, we have had enough of Jimmy G. And they went and got the kid from North Dakota State for three firsts and a third. That's a lot of firepower, draft capital. And they said, we're going to go with him. And he kept getting hurt, and then they got really lucky because on the last pick of the draft, they hit the lottery with Brock Purdy. Yes. And the next thing I know, they say, well, we're just going to plunge with Brock Purdy, and we're going to let Trey Lance go because we want to just wipe the slate clean and give it all to Brock Purdy. <laughs> and guess what? Trey Lance is now a Dallas Cowboy. I'd like to see him, but would Jerry at age, what is he, 81, would he, would he plunge with Trey Lance? No, he wants to just – do tried and true because he's not a plunger anymore. Maybe again he plays. We've Dak been Prescott. hanging around the rim. If he pays yeah. Dak Prescott, he's dead. If he doesn't pay him yeah. after this season, he's yeah. going to walk and be somebody else's treat, and you'll be looking mad for the next ten years. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he would actually hit the lottery and go in a different direction. I've just seen enough of Dak Prescott. I've seen what he can't do. I know what he can do. I also know what he can't do. So you he, should he just get rid of any do. quarterback that hadn't won the Super Bowl recently. No, what, what has he ever done for us? He's 2-5 and five in the postseason, Keyshawn. That's all you need to know. That, wait, he is the quarterback for the most valuable franchise. So it's his in fault. All, wait, it's let me finish. He is the quarterback for the most valuable franchise in all the world, not just in the NFL, in all the world. Yeah. And he's 2-5 and five in the postseason. It's not good it's enough. It's his fault that Aaron Rodgers made that throw in, against Green Bay back in 2016. Yeah, he played great. In that it's game. his fault, though. Well, well, Dak Prescott's fault. No, Y'all lost that game. No, Could that you bring was, up the record? Rookie Dak was it's, really good. And he had rookies you, you, leading the but world. But you're telling me two and five ain't going to get it done, but you're sitting there I saying. Know, but we're, we're now to year nine. That was year I, one. I, I understand. Two year one. I understand, but okay. you're blaming his playoff record solely on him when you got other members of the team that didn't show up either. Well, listen, the last three times he has not shown up. He has been pathetic in those three playoff losses. You know it, and I know it. He hasn't and played we know- well as he as he played in a regular season. There's no question about it. Yeah. But you act like the dude is just chopped liver, man. Yeah, I, I don't get you sometimes. Right. No, in the playoffs, he's chopped liver in the last three playoffs. He hasn't, games. but it's a bunch of quarterbacks yeah. that are bad in the playoffs that I don't hear you screaming about and saying they should be gone. Did they play for the Dallas Cowboys? I don't give a damn who they play oh. for. They sorry in the playoffs. Oh, okay. So let's finish up on the second Jerry quote because he's talking about Zeke, and there's one that we I didn't include. I'll you read don't? it real quick. He says about Zeke. He said, I don't have any regrets about Zeke. I just regret not winning. Frankly, I regret not winning the Super. He's just calling it the Super now instead of the Super Bowl. Oh, I uh, thought that was a typo. No, it's the Super. I'm pretty sure that's how he said it. And really, while our fans might take exception to that, where we have spent this money, we've been hanging around the rim pretty good. So he's saying, well, we hang around, but we haven't won the Super Bowl. Well, how can you even talk about the win in the Super Bowl? You haven't even gotten to an NFC championship game. So I don't know what he's talking about. I regret not winning the Super with Zeke. Well, Yeah, we, but obviously we he, didn't, he doesn't need to talk about the championship yeah. game because in order to get to the Super Bowl and win it, you got to go through the playoffs and get yeah. to the championship game. All so right. your focus is they haven't been a championship game. His focus is the Super Bowl. He's got yeah. bigger. He's got bigger uh, uh, thoughts than you. He's no. talking about the no, Super Bowl. No, he, he actually doesn't. I'm all <laughs> about not. the Super Bowl, 
and Dak Prescott ain't getting us to no Super Bowl. You know it, and I know it. It, make, it comforts you because you know you can come in here on Mondays with nothing to fear because Dak Prescott is the why quarterback. I, why do I care? Well, you, you care so you don't get shamed for being the cowboy hater that you are on this show on cow- Mondays. I'm not a cowboy hater. If I was a cowboy hater, Skip, I wouldn't be sitting here trying to educate you on why mm. the Cowboys are in the position that they're in. Mm. I don't care. Mm. I'm going to New Orleans regardless. Mm. Okay, you're the right. one that can't sleep at night no. on Sunday nights. Not no. me. I go to bed really good and rested to come back in here and smash you and Michael on Mondays. Oh, do you? Yeah, you could smash us because we get smashed at Arizona and at San Francisco and at Buffalo. That's why. So the point is, on the Z quote, when Jerry refers to some new face, he's talking about if I hired a general manager to come in, he would not. I don't uh, know that he's talking about a general manager opposed no, to talking about other players that they would be bringing in and spending money on. I think no, that's what he's saying. No, I think he's talking about a new GM. That's how I interpret it. See, I interpret yeah. it as new players. Some new, new players. face wouldn't uh, benefit from the experience that I already have with Zeke. I, I know what, what not to do with a Zeke Elliott. Okay. So he's saying some new face coming in. If I hired a general manager, he would not benefit from the experience I have for blowing the Zeke deal, for overpaying Zeke. <sighs> He's making the case he should not fire himself as GM. That's what well, he's saying. Why would he fire himself as GM? Well, you saw the last words. He said, I just need to do my homework and have the energy to do this. And you can book it. He will. Well, he had the energy. Yeah. He was right down some on those right papers on. that didn't look like they, anything. They said he used four big notebook pages to, to <laughs> scribble down charts and graphs and <laughs> I don't know. It's Wacky Jerry, and I'm stuck with him, and Keyshawn loves it. So, next question. The Warriors look like a team that is going to miss the playoffs. We debate that next. The Golden State Warriors lost twice over the weekend. At home Friday night to Indiana by 12, and then last night at Minnesota by 4. The Golden State Warriors are now just one game ahead of the Houston Rockets for the final play-in spot, the 10 seed. Paul Pierce, how surprised are you by what's happening to the Warriors? I mean, I'm, I'm literally shocked. Yeah, thank mm-hmm. you. I, I mean, I really can't put my finger on this Golden State Warrior team because they can't. This is a team who wins at home. They can't win at home this year. If you they look can't. at their home. They're record, below 500 they're at 18 home. and 19 on the, at home. 18 and 19? And 18 and 15 on the road. Just right there, if Golden State was. The Golden State that just normally won their home games, they're well into oh. the playoffs. I mean, they've developed such a reputation at home, it's hard to see why they're at where they're at. But then when you look at it, they've had 22 different starting lineups. Mm. You know, Chris Paul started 14 games this year. Now he's on the bench. Clay started 53 games. Now he's on the bench. They, they don't have an identity from what I see. Mm. You know, they're still trying to figure this out. When you move Clay to the bench, Chris started, he comes back in. So I think a lot of this I got to put on Steve Kerr. You know, it's hard to say, you know, we don't know how. When the last time we said, who are the Golden State Warriors? What's the Golden State Warriors identity? Mm. And it's hard to figure out. On no days rest, skip on back-to-backs, you know what their record is? Nine and five. Mm. Nine and five. That's amazing. Yeah. But if you can't win at home, you can score with the best of them. You rebound the ball well, so maybe I attribute this. It has to be, it lies in the middle. So I have to put a lot of this on Steve Kerr. What is going over there? On top of maybe the injuries, the suspensions, and things of that nature. I, I don't know what's going on. And they're going to have to make some decisions this summer. If they don't make the play in, or they make the play in and lose, what do you do with Klay Thompson moving mm. forward? That's going to be a tough pill for them to swallow. Yep. A guy who helped build this organization up. Yep. But it happens to the best of us. You know, you, you, you want to stay loyal, but that's just the dirty part of this game. I was traded. You've seen guys like Shaq was traded. Iverson, you know, is lo- what he did to the city of, of Philly, he was traded. So there's going to be some tough decisions that's going to have to be made this summer. So do you see Steph and or Clay slowing down? I don't see it really with, with Steph. And I think Clay has resurged. He like has. Coming off the bench, no, he he's been really good yeah. off of them. But if they're if it's not equal in wins, what do you do? If we're gonna say Clay, we're gonna bring you back at a hundred plus million or thirty million a year, are we gonna do that for a team that's as currently constructed, probably not a playoff team? Mm. So it's got to be some big decisions made this summer.
No, you, you, you're right about one thing. I can say a couple things, but Steve Kerr trying to figure out the lineup. So you start off by going back to the beginning of the year when they acquired Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. So now once they acquired Chris Paul, I think a lot of us assume, okay, that's, they're going to move him somewhere else. And then when they said, no, that's not the case, we're bringing him in. Then all of a sudden Draymond gets into his altercation and suspension. And I think that's where the Steve Kerr lineup switching and changing was going. And Clay obviously wasn't playing well. He was started, like you said, 50 some games, but in those 50 some games, he was just, it was like this. It was in the kid Pajimski started out playing. And then yeah, okay. started right. playing. So yeah. now you move Clay to the bench. You got Chris Paul injured. He comes back in. He now starting for you. He's a starter. Now he's doing what he can, but you're, the pace is slowing down some. So now you bring Clay back in and you switching the lineups around. So you're trying to figure out what the identity of your team is. And along the way, if you look at when Draymond was out, prior to that, they was okay at home. Then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, they just started losing and they haven't gotten back yeah. to their winning ways in the arena uh, in San Francisco. Now, in terms of Clay's future moving forward, I mean, he's got value for somebody. If they don't want to pay him the money he's looking for, somebody going to pay him. If it's real money versus chasing championships. Yep. I would think mm -hmm. at this stage in his career, championships, he's got plenty. It's probably a mix of both. Maybe there's a spot in Los Angeles for him because he's from L.A. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, at the end of the day, but they certainly have got to figure out, take a look if they don't make the play. And now the Rockets are sitting right there with a game, a game, one game back, yeah, in the, game back of the 10th spot. By the way, the Rockets play Portland at home tonight, and they're a 12 point favorite. So I assume they'll win that game, and all of a sudden it'll be a half game. Yeah. So if okay. you you sit that close. You know, they're three games back of the Lakers. Yeah. So the worst that the Lakers probably could do if the Rockets start to get hot and both the Warriors and the Lakers start to slip a little bit, the Lakers will fall into the 10th spot, the Warriors will fall into the 11th, and Houston will leave for all the Lakers and slide into that ninth spot. That's probably the way that I'm looking at it's going to happen. I think the Warriors are going to miss the play in this year. Wow. Well, that's a mouthful, man. Okay. To both your points. We're talking about a Steph Curry that every other day on the show, we talk about how he has revolutionized basketball. Mm -hmm. Greatest shooter ever. No leads safe with Steph Curry. And yet, his impact on this team is not MVP kind of impact because he's still having a pretty good year. He's, he's slipped a little bit from threes, 40%, which everybody else would take, but it's not what he does. And yet, he's 36 years of age, just turned 36. Clay's 34, Draymond's 34. They're somehow playing a little old to me where they don't have th that explosive impact where they just blow you off the floor at home. Like, to your point, they, they, at, at that place, I know they moved in, it used to be at Oracle. Maybe it's the switch to the big new digs. I don't know. But they, they don't. They don't just annihilate people at home. Indiana went in there, the same team you watched last night. They went in there on Friday night and just kicked them. One by 12, one pretty easily. It wasn't even close. So then there are issues with, I, I don't know why Kavon Looney, I, I've always liked him because he, he gives you every last ounce and he rim protects for them and gives them a physical inside presence and, and he just doesn't play anymore. And I don't know what, is that a Steve Kerr? It's like he's in the doghouse. I mean, he's it's a coach's up. decision. It's a coach's decision. All right, All right, now to Steve Kerr. He took some heat last night because Steph was removed from the game with about four minutes left in the third quarter, and he did not return until seven minutes were left in the game. And they're teetering, obviously, and they, they had a lead, and they were doing the reverse. They, Steph wasn't protect, you know, coming after you. He was losing, but he was, he was watching them lose the lead. Okay, so let me show you what Steve Kerr, how he defended his, himself after the game for not playing Steph high minutes. We can't expect to, to just ride Steph um, game after game after game. You, you know, these last few weeks have been really tough on him. We've, we've, we've put the burden of this franchise on his shoulders for <laughs> 15 years. Um, we can't expect him to play 35 minutes. we got five games in seven days on this road trip. So um, if you want to say that him playing 30 minutes instead of 32 is a difference in the win and the loss, I, I totally disagree with that. And we're trying to, we're trying to win the game. We're trying to, uh, to keep him fresh, too. All right, now let's hear what Steph had to say about not playing high minutes last. Play as many minutes as, as I'm fresh and able to. Uh, so a little bit, 
knowing that they were just going on the run, um, it was the lead was kind of wailing away. So, you know, we played the whole fourth quarter in India against Indiana. It didn't work out. This didn't work out. So we got to find somewhere in the middle. Hmm. All right. I mean, I agree there. I mean, there's no way. I think a lot of the onus has to be on both of them. Like you said, because if I'm on the bench, I'm the guy. I'm looking at the lead the window. There's no way I'm sitting for eight minutes. I might just get up and check myself in the game. Like, <laughs> no, seriously. That's Steph. you telling me that Steph Curry can't I'm do that? You. Yeah. You no, can't I'm with you. I'm not saying he plays like, here. If I'm him. sitting for five minutes and the lead is slipping away, yeah. he can stand up and walk to the table like I'm going in. What, what, what would Steve Kerr do? No, I'm just, <laughs> like, seriously. Like, I mean, they, they, I've done that before. Like, yeah. I mean, so I'm not about to sit Did here. Did you do it to Doc? I've done that. To to whoever, whoever. Like, like whoever. Yeah. If I'm the guy. Can you remember seeing, a time you did it to Doc? Would, would he say I'm something gonna, to you, you know, after Doc, the game? I'll be like, oh, it's time to go in. He'll, okay. he'll not, you're the guy. You're the guy. You know you feel rested. I'm going to stand up, and I'm a, I might and just walk to the table. Okay. It's, it's time. Because right. you have that understanding with your coach. So Steph can completely do that. You don't, you don't like to see you build up the league when you're in the game, and then you come out, you sit down, and the lead the windows, and you've been over there already four or five minutes. That's that's enough. That's enough. You'll just get up. Let me. I'm, it's time for me to go back in, coach. I, I, I have something to say about this. So they have to find a, a fine line between those things. But then Steph, he can do that. <laughs> he can do that. You tell. I mean, think about the star players. If Katie gets up, walks in. The, Ron, Bron gets up, walks well, in. Hey, the you think Le- the coach just goes be, in and out? You think the coach is no. like, no, nah, not hey. right now, not right now. Hey. LeBron hey. comes in and out when he feels when he like feels it because like he's it. earned the right to do no, that. You, you, and then these yeah. games are big. Yeah. These games are big for them. They need these wins down the stretch. And so he plays the whole fourth quarter last game. Then you come and you sit for eight minutes. I mean, the game is in the balance. So something has to give. They have to figure it out between him and Steve to where we got to find these ways to win. Mm -hmm. Because they're capable. I mean, I'm looking at the numbers. I mean, looking at he's playing well. And the star player knows his body. Look, I'll give you everything today. They don't practice anyway. Nobody practices. Like when we play, we play this game 40 minutes. We practice in the next day. They don't practice no more. So... The rest is the day off the next day. Yeah. You know, we need these games right now. You, yeah. you, and that's what they pay them the big bucks for. So Steph did play seven fourth quarter minutes, and he went two of six, one of four from three. But he, he lost got, his rhythm. He got to the free throw, and he made his four free throws. So he did score nine points in seven minutes. Yeah, Not bad. But he bad, sat down, he sat many, down nine, nine down. minutes. Nine nine minutes. minutes. <laughs> he sat down damn near a whole quarter. Yeah. yeah. You so can he, lose your rhythm that way. He, he had made – four threes in the game, and he made one of four down the stretch. So he he definitely lost his three-point shooting rhythm. And then it was intriguing to me for the last play of the game because they were down three. Steve called it for Clay to, to spring loose on the backside. You know, they swung it to Clay. Do we have that shot? Do we have the last shot? I think we do. Yeah. So so this wasn't – He just was off balance a yeah. little bit, it looked he, like he to just me. Couldn't, yeah. He couldn't. He's he could, falling he, out of bounds. If he have slid over a little yeah, bit more to the left. I'm not mad at that shot for Clay. No, but I'm saying if he could have got lined shots. up a little bit better. I mean, he makes those shots. We've seen, I mean, he goes into OKC, scores, making shots like that. But I'm saying, I mean, you're a shooter. I'm not. I'm saying, though, it looked like when he, he left his hands last night, I felt it was going to hit the front of the rim. Yeah. I was like, maybe he should be, if he could have got over a little bit more to line it all the way yeah. up. Mm. I mean, I, I pretty much feel like every time Clay shoots, it's going in. <laughs> no matter, okay. on balance, so on if, if you're Steph, are you even a little irritated that the play wouldn't call for you? If I'm Steph, I'm not mad if Clay gets that shot. Yeah. You know, right. anybody else. That's yeah. the same. It has, it has to be out of him and Clay. Yeah, that's the same, but basically. But simple fact, yeah. I think you got to give Steph the first look. If he's not open, then Clay should be a second look. It should be a play drawn up to where those are the first two options. But when I see Steph sets the screen... And not even get, pop out for he a look. He did not pop. He didn't he, pop no, out for uh-uh, a look. No. Tells me that the play was, it was most definitely, likely for Clay. Yeah, but why would you, why would I draw up a play for Paul Pierce when I know damn well they not gonna let Paul? Well, get that's the that's the thing. That's the thing. When you're so dangerous, when you're such a great shooter, yeah. hey, you have let, to draw they're something. Gonna, they're not gonna let well, you. Well, he do wasn't that. even a decoy. But, you gotta set something up to where you got two guys running at Steph. To where a guy is going to be open. He's but that he got, dangerous. But, but he got a clean, basically, he got a clean look, right? You, you know what? Kyle, know. Kyle Anderson closed him out. He's slow-mo, but he closed him out pretty good. Got a hand in his face. 
I mean, I can't fault Steve Kerr for not I, I, I like, making Steph the first look no, you in this situation that. because no, next game, Clay might be, I mean, Steph might be the look that they're looking for hey. in certain plays. But in this situation, everybody in the building assume okay. you're getting ready to get a ball to Clay. I, I, I mean, get a ball to Steph. But, but Keyshawn, when he played for the Boston Celtics, every late game night, the defense is saying we're going to keep him from making this shot. Right. We're going to triple team him, and he kept making the shot anyway because that's just yeah, what but, you do. But when he you, got Ray and he got KG, no, but you put and the he, responsibility you, on Steph because if Steph has to touch the ball, if he doesn't have a shot, he can make a play for someone else. Like at the end of the games, I'm getting so the ball. you just want him to touch so, it. Did I, yeah, I'm getting the ball. Did I always take the shot? No, but you can make a play for somebody. But I trust. Steph with the ball down the stretch. But if it's 10 seconds to go in the game, though, and you get the ball to Steph. How, how good is he off the dribble, though, from three? Okay, he pops out, catches it, not open. How many times have we seen Steph off the dribble make a play or make a well, shot? I, you're, I'm saying he's great yeah, off see, the dribble. I'm, off the yeah, see, yeah. I'm, I'm with Steve Kerr in these situations. I done put the, 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 the franchise on his back for so many years and opportunities and games. That's why Clay can knock great. that same shot down, too. Okay. That's why Steph is Steph. We wouldn't That's even be Steph. having this conversation if that thing would have went in. I know, but they were going for the surprise look. They were going for Clay but, instead right. of Steph. And I'm yeah. okay with that, yeah. knowing that the defense is probably going, if I'm coaching and I'm sitting on the sideline, I'm drawing something up, and I just equate the football, I'm okay if you're not giving me the rock and you're giving it to somebody else as long as it works. Yeah. And if it doesn't work or if you are equal and you're giving the football to Kenny McCardell in a situation where they double teaming me, and most likely that's what's going to happen, I'm okay with deferring to a guy that I trust. Like, mm -hmm. I think Steph is okay with deferring right. to Clay Thompson because Clay has uh, hit those shots okay. multiple times in his career. Right. So I can't be mad at the situation. You okay. just can't be scared. On the flip side, if Wiggins gets that, I'm upset. But but you're not going to – if I'm Steve, I'm not giving it to Wiggins right. unless he's the right. third, fourth right. option. Right. And I if, want them to hot potato back and forth before right. you go to Wiggins. Right. And if Kaminga gets it, Steve Kerr is fired. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But Steve Kerr is smart enough not to even draw nothing he's up not, no. for Kaminga unless it, they down by one and it's right. a small guy in underneath the rim yeah. and we can lob it up with three seconds to go, something like that. Well, the game was lost in the balance when Steph sat those nine minutes. Though. Yeah, it, it was. More so than that shot. Yeah. All right, back to your original point, Steve Kerr, hot seat. Hot seat. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole idea of should we start to question him? Is he, is he oh, the, the on, ingredient he that's not working? Well, that's what Paul started off with. I know, but there ain't no hot seat. He don't I mean, mean hot seat is in firing. No, I mean, look, 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 Bob Meyer saw something. He left. He did. He saw something. He was like, let me get out of here before this ship starts to sink. Mm -hmm. Well, he, all you got to do is look at the age. They're 30 I plus mean, years I, old. All, what, they 30? Everybody's 33 and older. That's the main three, four guys. Yeah. Wiggins might be the youngest of right. those four, right? And so that's why I say this summer is a big decision based on how they finish this year up. Yeah. It's like, what do you do with Klay Thompson? Come on to L.A., man. We, we all right. Yeah. We'll take you. No, Steve Kerr is The Lakers get older yeah. now. That's, right. that's okay. We got LeBron, Clay. Now y'all the oldest still team in the league. We still got yeah. LeBron. We still got LeBron, Clay, AD. Still got LeBron. Still got LeBron. Y'all the old, oldest team in the league. It don't matter, man. though. You trying to get older? Y'all was old in Boston in 1-1. <laughs> Oh, man. Y'all in the best years behind y'all. Yeah, we got injured after that. We, we, the Lakers <laughs> going to be dealing with a lot of injuries if they make these oh. trades. <laughs> I can tell you, the first the first guy who's going to go there, if somebody goes, will be the coach. Because it's just always easiest mm -hmm. to just change man, the coach. Not, they just gave him an extension I yesterday. Know, I, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Not I understand. literally yesterday, no, I know, but like I, I know. this yeah. season. And he's been really good for a really long time. Although I do think he's, Mark Jackson still doesn't get enough credit for what he handed Steve Kerr. But still, I don't know. Sometimes you get to a point where you just need a new voice. If they don't make the play in, what do you do? If they don't make the play in. Yeah. They don't make the play in, what do I do? Yeah, what do you do with the team? What do you do with Kerr? What do you do with Clay? I'm, you... I'm keeping Wiggins and Curry for sure. I'm keeping those two for sure. And mm. then maybe I look at moving a Draymond and mm. something like that. We're going to circle back to this. Mm. All right. Steph Curry to L.A. Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> oh, man. Now y'all got to Hold on a second. The Chiefs <laughs> traded the NFL's best cornerback for a mere third-round pick. That is next. 
Man, for me, this was a stunner, and it did trend on Twitter or X, as they now call it, most of the weekend. Legereus Sneed was the best cornerback I saw last season, and the Chiefs agreed to trade him to the Titans for no more than a third-round pick? Are you kidding? Are the Chiefs ever going to miss him? So, Keyshawn, how do you explain this? You know, there's really nothing to explain, Skip. In the end, they have a formula that they believe in. And they believe in, okay, the moment that we get a high-priced guy who's an all-pro or whatever you want to call it, we don't want a bunch of those because we can draft well. We can develop well. If you go back and you think about prior to uh, uh, Darius Sneed, who they take took in the fourth round, they traded for a guy in Traverius Ward from the mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys in 2018 who was undrafted yep. and was traded to them in August. So they say to themselves, we can keep doing this. Now, all of a sudden, Snead comes up, but then they draft a McDuff forecasting that Snead is going to play well enough that he's going to need a big-time deal. We'll move on from him, and we'll slide McDuff into our top defensive McDuffie, back category. Yeah. McDuffie mm -hmm. into our top defensive back category. Mm. They just That's just how they do things. It reminds me so much of the New England Patriots. It just really does. The quarterback is a constant state, the head coach. The tight end and Kelsey, much like Gronkowski. Yep. And there's always one defensive player like a Teddy Bruschi that still is there from the original regime, like a Chris Jones. They take care I mean, of that. But, but Chris Jones, I love Teddy. Uh, no, no, but, but I understand. He's, he's way I understand up there, not, yeah. But I'm just talking about the, a player, a body, yeah. not necessarily mm -hmm. accolades. Yeah. But I'm just saying a body where... On the defensive side, there's always like one guy that they would keep. And they would say, okay, he's our guy. We're going to keep him. And we're just going to keep rotating with everybody else and getting rid of him and keep our salary cap a certain way. And we're going to penny pinch with everybody else except two or three guys on our entire roster. And that's what the New England Patriots did for years. And they won a lot of Super Bowls. Here's what this recipe is for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. It looks like they're going to keep winning Super Bowls by doing it. Because they have a certain philosophy and style that they see defensively that their secondary guys can fit in. We don't know what they feel about some of the guys on the back end that backs up other guys. Now, mind you, that secondary is extremely young. And they, there's a young secondary. This is not an old secondary. There's a lot of young guys. So they feel great about the prospects of these dudes turning into something special. Yeah. You say, well, why only a third-round pick if, if Snead is such a, a, a shutdown corner? Because at the end of the day, you're not going to pay him. And everybody knows you don't want to pay him because you just paid Chris Jones. You're going to have to address Kelsey and some other players along the way. And you've already said, hey, we open for business. So if I'm open for business and the Tennessee Titans have got to pay him as well. They do. This, is hap this happens all the time when trades get out and guys ask for trades. They never get the true value. If you just keep it close to your vest and then all of a sudden you look up and a guy's traded, you go, oh, my God, mm -hmm. they gave up this, 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 and this. No one ever knew that Jalen Ramsey was actually going to be traded. All he said is, I want my money, I want my money, I want my money, I want my money. And then Tom Coffin said, no, we're not going to pay you. The Rams said, we'd rather give you a, everything you want, the kitchen sink. You, you see what I'm saying? If he was sitting out there demanding a trade and I'm out of here, the Rams wouldn't have given him that. The Rams yeah. would have just gave him a nickel and said, keep it moving. And this is what happens with players and teams and organizations when they get leaks out there by trading players. Yeah. But they had no other choice because they franchise tagged him. They weren't going to let him walk for nothing, but they had already made a decision. We're going to keep Chris Jones. Now, if he would have signed a franchise tag and played on that franchise tag, he, he they would have kept him. He's the non-exclusive. Oh, the non-exclusive. Yeah. They would have kept him for sure. It's just hard to believe a player that played at such a high level last year only merited a third-round pick. It just seems like somebody would say, I need that, I want that, at least a two. At least a two, if not a one. If you told me that you got a one for Legere Sneed, I'd say, good good for you. That that works. Yeah, but that one plus that, I don't know what he's going to get, $90 million you know, that, or whatever it's going to yeah. be, that's a big number. Yeah. All right, he's 27 years old. He's young. He was originally a fourth-round pick, to your point, out of Louisiana Tech, and he's played four seasons. So he should be entering his prime as a corner. And, and I'll never forget the first thing Jimmy Johnson told me when I met him in 1989 was, he's a defensive coach, as you know, 
You win with the guy who can rush the passer and the guy who can cover the, the pass, you know, with your defensive end and your, your cornerback. You have to have them or you, you can't play defense. Well, he, he played cornerback at such a high level because he competes so hard. And he's one of the best trash talkers in a good way because he'd get into everybody's face and let them know, not today, not here, not now. And that play that he made on Zay Flowers at the goal line, it just changed the game. If we, I think we're a little punch out. out. Yeah, it's a punch out. Right this here. Play, this is okay. This is seventeen to fourteen. If if Zay Flowers gets in the end zone and he didn't get in the end zone, it's just. It, it's a season saver. I, I still believe, and I could be wrong, but I, I just believe in my heart that if he gets that in the end zone and cuts it to 17-14, this is the first play of the fourth quarter. We got a whole quarter to play. I think Lamar's going to pull that game out. But no, they went the other way with it. And and somehow Baltimore could never get back in position to, to, to close the gap anymore. That was it. That was the play. And it was made by that cornerback, and he made plays for them all year long. All good things happen yeah. to certain guys like yeah, that. That's true. You know, they, they just yeah. do things that you don't expect. Interceptions fall in their hands. They punch out fumbles. All of those sort of things. Now, maybe Kansas City is betting wrong on this. Maybe they're betting right, though, because they see their corners. They, they understand their defense more than we do. Okay? We look at it, we go... Oh, my God, he got an interception again. We'll yeah. take that all day long. No, oh, my I, God, he punched out the ball. Yeah. But when they're looking at it, they're sitting there saying, well, first of all, he's in the wrong position. Uh, he's not doing this right. That's how they, that's how they look at stuff You're and right. they make these decisions yeah. on guys saying we can get somebody at a cheaper rate to do the same thing as Snead. That's, that's, what, that's how they – because if you think about it, Javarius Ward – was Sneed before Sneed became. So that's how well, they start to point. say anybody we plug in to this position is going to benefit from playing in our scheme and our defense. And they could be wrong, though. But then again, on the flip side, they could be right. They could be. So there were reports that Sneed had a knee issue at the end of the year, but didn't seem to impact him in the Super Bowl at all. And because of him and because of Chris Jones, by the end of the year, I think you would agree their defense was way underrated because it was playing hellacious good football. Well, defense, and I, I think by the Super Bowl, they were right there with San yeah, Francisco's their defense, defense. Their defense was solid all season long. And then they peaked to a point they where peaked. they started playing really, really good. They did. And then in the postseason, they started to play better. Boy, they just took off. And he was such a lightning rod for them that now I look at their depth chart. I, I don't know these kids. Maybe you've They're all them. young, though. Yeah. Josh Williams, excuse me, Joshua Williams is – He'll enter his third year. He was a fourth-round pick out of Fayetteville State mm -hmm. in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And then Jalen Watson is a former seventh-round pick, also entering his third year out of Ventura College up in the state of Washington. Well, these are, you know, diamonds in the rough. They better be. You know, somebody better be able to play they, where they, they just know. They play well. Those young dudes play well for them last year. Yeah. So I think they have the confidence and they feel that they can duplicate some of the same success with them instead of Snead in the lineup. Yeah. So to your point, it's the Dallas Cowboys syndrome. So you say, okay, we're going to pay the quarterback, even though he keeps giving you some hometown discounts because, well, he did. He, he took far really, less. It's than, not really a hometown okay. discount, but I get it. It, it, it. It's better than you think it is because he did space it out pretty good yeah. for them. Oh, you yeah. Know? No, he spaced it out, but yeah. that doesn't mean the Cowboys can't space it out. No, but Dak didn't space it out last time, and they're still paying the piper on that one. You know that I one, wouldn't have spaced yeah. it out either. Okay, so they pay in Kansas City. They pay the quarterback, and they pay the tight end, as you said, and now they have paid the defensive tackle. Or if you if you it. think about a couple yeah. of years ago, they traded for the left tackle from Baltimore. Yep, uh, Brown, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, he was a free agent. They just basically said bye bye. We'll yeah. we'll replace that spot because we're not going to give you the type of money that it would take to, to bring you back. They just said bye-bye. So they have this same New England Patriot sort of philosophy of guys when it's, when it's time to get paid, they only going to pay one, two, three, four guys, and the rest of you, y'all off on your own. Yep. They let Tyreek Hill walk. They did. They that, traded that him better huge. yet. They yeah. traded him, not let him walk. They did. But Tyreek said, hey, man, I got to be the highest paid dude in the business. Yep. They said, no, nah, never mind. We'll get it done another way. That's just their – it sounds like that that's their, their mindset and their philosophy 
on how Mr. Hunt wants to do things. Okay. It's funny you call him Mr. Hunt. Or I knew Clark he was Hunt like, or like whatever. Eight years old. He, yeah. Clark. He's Clark yeah. to me. But the point is, with the luxurious look, Tyreek's a great example. I thought they would struggle without him, and clearly they pulled it off. They, they won a Super Bowl. They won two. Two. Super but I mean, Bowls they won the Super Bowl immediately they did. the next year. They did. Give you that. And it's in large part because of the quarterback and because of his tight end. Yeah. Okay. So. Now I look at you've lost the spark plug of your defense. I just think you miss if you, it. If you see, you go back to you looking at it, they'll skip. You say it, it just uh, seems like a spark plug of the defense. When Chris Jones didn't play, they still lost. Oh, they did. <laughs> so no, they did. They're looking at it and saying, well, that's really the reason we lost is the beef up front. Yeah. Our back end is only successful because our beef up front is yeah. applying the pressure. They don't have to hold on for four seconds to dear life. This is how they think and they process this information yeah, when they're sitting at the round table yeah. in their conference room trying to make these decisions. And by the way, that beef up front, just that guy, he made two plays in the Super Bowl that changed the Super Bowl on Brock Purdy. Mm -hmm. He just did because he is that dude. So I, I get it, but man, did Tennessee benefit from – Wait, you, you got an all pro, a first team all pro corner for a third round pick? Take that. They've made a lot of nice little quiet moves in Tennessee. They're starting to look like they're turning back into a decent Pollard. Team. Yeah. Uh, not Jared Judy, but mm -hmm. Kelvin Ridley. Yeah, Calvin Ridley. Those two right there. They got Hopkins still. Yeah. yeah. They got the kid that they drafted. Uh, now on defensive side of the ball, they pick up Snead. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it might be something. Yeah. Will Levis, I guess, will be the quarterback. Yeah, not a big fan, but he will be the quarterback, and they're trying to build around him and make his life as easy as they possibly they can. They took a plunge on him. And <laughs> <laughs> took a plunge, yeah. They, they didn't take a plunge on Derrick Henry, though, so here we go. All right, up next, Dion says he's going to go Eli with Shadur. Here's what Deion Sanders had to say about where his son should do her and maybe Travis Hunter will go at the top of next year's draft. So there are certain cities that it ain't going to happen. It's going to be in Eli, meaning there are certain teams in certain cities that will be told they should not draft Shadur or maybe Travis sure. because they will not play for that team in that town. <laughs> Eli Manning and his father, of course, made it clear to the Chargers he wanted to play in New York for the Giants. And that happened then in 2004. So, Keyshawn, your reaction to what Dion said? I agree with Dion. Doesn't look, man, I understand we all tend to uh, turn our sights on what the Mannings did. Right. That's the gold standard. We got to if you want to do it, go to the Mannings. And by the way, just to clarify and bring people up to date, that was 2004. So, obviously, Archie and Eli said, no, we want to play in New York. So they, they forced a trade. So New York sent to, to the Chargers Phillip Rivers and a one and a three and a five. So it was a pretty big blockbuster trade. But Phillip Rivers was pretty great. Yeah, they so, couldn't yeah. get the deal done. Yeah. They couldn't get the deal done mm -hmm. right before the clock was going to run out. Yeah. So they just basically said, like they yeah. do in the NBA, mm -hmm. we're going to take him and then we'll move him yeah. at a later date. Yeah. I have no problem with what Dion is talking about, but the Mannings are not the first to say that they don't want to play in a certain city at all. If you go back and you, as far as John Elway. He did. John Elway said, no, 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 no. I don't want to be in Baltimore. I'm not, I'll go play for the Yankees, mm -hmm. okay, because I know that the Baltimore situation at that time was horrible it in was. front office management. Mm -hmm. You still have those same issues in certain situations in certain cities and towns. And yeah. Deion, as dialed is, as he is to the NFL, he could talk to Roger Goodell, he could talk to other owners, and they'll tell him, nah, they still haven't learned their lesson. He doesn't want to set his kids up for fail, not his kids, but... Travis Hunter, one of his, basically is his, his, his son. He is. And, and, yeah. and Shadur yeah. doesn't want to send them, allow them to go somewhere where an organization doesn't have its it together. Why would I want to be stuck for years somewhere where all of a sudden everything is about the quarterback? It's the reason. Not only the city doesn't understand. Like, it, it's just certain situations you just don't welcome. Even my own self when I was being drafted number one overall the Jets. I actually told the Jets the night before the draft 
don't draft me. You did? Absolutely, 100%. Oh. Written in my book, everybody oh. knows it. Oh. But they did it anyway. And the reason I didn't want to be drafted is because they wanted to pay me like the 10th pick of the draft oh. instead of like the first pick of the draft in a pre-draft deal. I said, I'm, I'm not looking to be in a pre-draft deal. I'd rather go to Jacksonville at number two and get what I know I'm supposed to get rather than have y'all treat me as if I'm something different than the number one overall pick. So don't draft me. They wind up drafting me anyway. And what happened with the money? We, we, I held all the way out until the start of the <laughs> season. And we finally got a deal done. But that just certain situations in the organization did, did was being run first, bad. first pick money? Yeah. When you finally. Yeah. Finally, yeah. Okay. I held out to All get right. what I needed. Okay. You know, but but in situations like with Dion, you want to put them and make sure they in the right situation, especially a quarterback. As I always say, surroundings are important. The situation yeah. is extremely important. Okay, these young quarterbacks come in and there's no real guidance. The first thing that the fan base and everybody wants to do is throw them in the mix. Mm. And then they don't work out two, three years later. You Justin Fields, you on three different coordinators and two different head coaches that are both horrible, and everybody blames you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I'm with Prime 100%, man. Mm -hmm. Do what you need to do to get your son in the right position By to the succeed. Way, quick order before we go to Paul, but quick order of business. The, the Dallas Cowboys early on did that with Russell Maryland. They took him number one, but he was clearly like the 10th pick in the draft, and you didn't think you were the 10th pick in the draft. No. So Russell Maryland gladly took the honor of being the first pick in the draft and much lower money, and it really set up the Cowboys to turn into their 90s. Good, good for Russell. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, I Go. like what Dion is doing. He's taking the pressure off his players instead of them coming to the media and not being well liked. But you guys got to understand this happens across all sports involuntarily because there's situations that you're saying, we're not going to work out for you, which means I don't want to be there, you know, no matter what pick. So it happens in basketball and it happens in, in football. It's just the simple fact that Dion came out and said, there's certain organizations we're not going to going to play for. And so I didn't work out for certain teams because I didn't want to be there. And if I had a, and I was on the draft board in my draft to be there, but they knew him coming in, he's not going to be there. And this happened, I believe, in 2000. Steve Francis was going to get picked, I think, one or two to Vancouver Grizzlies at the time. And he said, in, instead of me going there, I'm going to retire. This is a kid coming out of college. He said, if you guys draft me, I'll retire. You know, so it happens all the time. And so I love the fact that Dion is, is taking the pressure off to these guys. And we are in a time of player empowerment to where players really control the narrative and where they go and where they play nowadays. And so if it's a situation to where it, help, it works out for them position-wise to where they'll thrive, to where marketing dollars, because that's a factor too these days. Kids want to be where they can be marketed, where they can make the most of their situation, not only on the field, but off the field. And so you look at... Uh, the situation as a whole to where they'll get the best deal and they'll thrive in those situations. And, and so I'm, I'm with Dion on this. You see, the reason I would go to Jacksonville with no problem at all is because I know Tom Coughlin was going to be a hell of a coach and yeah. it was going to be a hell of a team. So you got to factor all that into the equation. Dion, them money-wise, that ain't whatever. They not worried about that. It's, if he moves from the number one guy to the sixth pick of the draft, he's going to lose several million dollars. But in the end... He's going to be in the right situation with the yeah. right people to succeed and make up that money in the long term. Do you think there's some cities, just city alone, not team, but city that Dion would want, not want his son to play in? Yeah, I think there's some cities, of course. That's why he's saying it, because the coaches are going to change. Yeah, the coach is going to he get Shadour could get drafted next year as the number one pick in the draft. Right. Assuming I don't know who the team would be, just whatever. Who knows? And that coach gets fired. Yeah. Now it's a new coach that come in, but he in a city that embraces his style, his culture, who he is. You know, if he goes to some cities and towns that doesn't embrace that, doesn't matter if he got a new, he has a new coach or not. It, he won't like it, and it'll be a bad situation. Hmm. So. There's one team, one NFL team, that looks right now like it could be the worst team, and that is Tom Brady's old team, the Patriots, who have done less in free agency than my Dallas Cowboys have. And so now Gerard Mayo says the new coach, well, we're open for business with this third pick. We might not use it. Well, 
I can make a case they should wait a year because Shadur is going to be sitting right there with the first pick if, in fact, And then I'm going to make a team. case for Dion. don't send your son there. Okay. That's why I was going to bring this man back into play because we're talking about Boston, Massachusetts. Did you have any trepidation about playing there even though it was the Celtics? No, it, it was different for me. I didn't work out for Boston, but nor did I think I was going to be a 10th pick either. Mm. You know, I was projected to go top five. Now, at the time, I was like, I didn't care what NBA team I, I would play for. I was happy just making it to the league. You know, I wasn't in – times were a little different back then. You were happy to make it, and you didn't really hear a lot of players saying, I don't want to be there. there. I can't even think of a team to where I said I did just didn't want to be there at the time. You know, just as a kid excited to make the NBA. Okay. Now, I'll tee it up a different way. Yeah. Did you ever experience some uncomfortable situations in Boston – with the fan base? Early on. They're very critical of you early on until you prove yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, they, they didn't know if they wanted me there or, or if I belonged there. Uh, it definitely got comfortable with the fans, though. Yeah. You know, just yelling out certain things you don't want to hear. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it happened early, but yeah. once, once I showed them who I was, it was, it was all good. But see, that's the difference. It, it, when I say I don't want them to go there, you, you, you're battling multiple things, right? You number one thing you battling is Tom Brady. Because no matter what you do, I got it. You're right. You ain't right. gonna never be Tom I'm Brady. Right. Right. And on top of that, his personality from, from an outsider looking in, that doesn't work for them. Mm. I, it doesn't wake you the time to watch out. No, they I, not they not in his daddy? Oh man, the people from from just being an outsider? I know. The way I, that I'm they gonna you. feel about the situation yeah. in Boston? Nah, I probably that's probably not a good idea. But Keyshawn, the kid can play. I get it. He can really, I understand really it. play. I understand it. Yeah. So you made the point taking pressure off the kids. I also think it applies pressure to these kids going into next year because people are going to be expecting everything from both of them, and I think they will stand up and live up to everything. I know what team he's going to go to, though, but I ain't going to get your hopes up high. Really? I ain't gonna get your hopes about it. I can smell it a mile away. The Cowboys. You don't have inside. I can smell it a mile away. Cowboys. Man, I can smell it a mile away. <laughs> and when Dion said this, he didn't. He he didn't not mention Jerry Jones in the article. He mentioned Jerry Jones in the article. Did he? Yeah, he mentioned that. he mentioned Roger Goodell. He was just saying no, okay. he talks people to a lot know. of people and a lot of sure people we does. know and this that and the other. And he mentioned Jerry Jones. I was like. Oh, okay. That's where you're going. Oh, okay. We getting ready to do something here. Got well, it. Maybe cool that's why Jerry's going to let Dak play it out and maybe, walk maybe, away. Maybe, right? maybe maybe that's the case. But I don't know how Jerry's going to acquire the number one overall pick to take Shadur. Well, maybe maybe he doesn't have to be the number one overall pick. Because maybe Dion the Dallas Cowboys say, is so bad this year that they're in the top five, and Dion says – we don't want to go to here, here, whoever here. number one is. Mm -hmm. I don't know who number one would be, but we don't want to go to the Carolina Panthers. They got a quarterback already. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, you move from the fifth spot to the third spot, and there he is, boom, sitting right mm -hmm. there because I don't want to go to the number two team. Mm. So maybe maybe that's the case. I'll go on record as saying that Shadur right now is better than Dak Prescott. As Ooh. we speak, as he stands, Ooh. wherever he is in Boulder, Colorado, he's better I, than I, Dak Prescott. I love Dion and I love Shadur. And Deion Sanders wouldn't say that he's be his son is better he would than not Dak say Prescott that, right but now. he would believe that. Not right now. Could he be better than Dak Prescott? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you, you, <laughs> this hey. kid, you act like Dak Prescott is just nothing. Like this dude is just like he's a bum. Two and five. Think about what you're saying, and you saying, Skip. Think, think about what you said on this show. There's just something missing. Josh Dak Allen Prescott. hasn't There's won in the playoffs. Missing. Yeah. He lost. He ain't been no. in the Super Bowl. Josh Allen's better than Dak Prescott. I'll take him in a heartbeat. Man, they the same to me. All. They the same to me. Same? Same. Really? Yeah. Exactly the yeah. same. Huh. Same. I, I watched Josh Allen. Neither playing. one's been to the Super Bowl. Neither Josh one, neither one has won twice. an MVP. I saw Josh really outplay him on a Thanksgiving Day game. Yeah, he beat him. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. Huh. That doesn't mean because you beat him. You know what that means? Yeah. Your team was better than his team on that day. Yeah. You right. just want me to be stuck with Dak so that you can come in here I just and told throw you, your chest I out Monday I literally just told you Monday the Cowboys are going to get in position yep. to take Shadour. I just said that. Yeah. So how do I want you to be stuck with Dak? Because that sounds pie in the sky to me. I don't see it. Or Shadour could go to the Rams, too. 
That'll be a good pick. Ooh, that'll be a that'll, that'll be, be a, a that's a good that'll fit. be a great a fit. fit. You got an offensive mind that's, that's ridiculous fit. in Sean McVay. Oh, so, so now you just snatched him right out from under me, right? <laughs> you can't win for losing with him, man. Well, you and just, then Matthew Stafford. You got my hopes up. Matthew Stafford. At, at I agree. Any point. I agree. You know, and he yeah. now if you told me he's better than Carson Wentz right now, I would agree with you. <laughs> I would agree with you. Right. And Carson Wentz is their backup. I would agree with you on that one, but he's yeah. not better than Dak right now. Not right now. now. He's not, not right he's now. He's got more potential than Dak, yeah. but not right now. Because yeah. his head seems to be probably a little stronger. Mm. Who? Shadour. Oh. Yeah. Dang. His head is probably a little yeah. stronger. Shadour is not better than Matt Stafford as we speak. No, no, no. But I'm yeah. saying for, for the Rams, yeah. let's just say that the Rams get their hands on him. To sit behind Matthew Stafford for one year. Absolutely. And take over. Beautiful. It's that'd perfect. Be per- it's you were Sean McVay? Oh, man, McVay. That's, you oh. died and went to heaven. L.A., Hollywood. Dying and went to heaven. It's perfect. Yeah. But Dallas would be perfecter, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a, is that a word? Perfect-er? I just made it up because I like it because it's true. All right. I can't wait to hear what Paul has to say about this. CP3 questions the credibility of ref Tony Brothers, who is in his 29th NBA season. That is next. Here's how Chris Paul explained why he was ejected by Tony Brothers late in Friday night's home loss to Indiana. Oh, man. Oh, Tony. <laughs> He's talking to me. I talk back. I called him a TikToker. And I got a tech. That was the last one? No, the first one. I just said TikToker. Gave me a tech. Was there? Second one, I just said, that's too much power. You know what I mean? Gave me another tech. TikToker meaning? (laughs) Need to judge the jury and all that. Mm. Then CP3 posted this interview with brothers that was posted on TikTok. I don't even really care too much for basketball. I'm the judge, the jury, prosecuting attorney, defense attorney, everybody. Ooh. Okay. Paul Pierce, you're familiar with Mr. Brothers for many, many years. This is his 29th. Do you like or have a problem with the way Chris Paul handled this? Look, I've never seen anyone get kicked out of the game from calling somebody a TikToker. I think Tony Brothers was sensitive in this matter. This might have been the most creative way to get thrown out of a game I ever seen. You know, Chris Paul rubs people the wrong way. He has a certain sarcasticness about him. He does. And, you know, when he first said it, when I first saw the interview, I was like, you got a tech for calling somebody a TikToker? Like, is that a bad thing? People make millions of dollars off TikTok. I mean, <laughs> what's, what's so bad about that? And then I saw the interview that Tony Brothers did. And I was like, you know what? Chris Paul did his research on him. They must have a history to where he did his research and saw this because I've never seen that. And, but I'm not, I'm not a TikTok user either. So that's kind of like a low blow for him. He went deep into Tony Brothers' skin and, 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 and hit him right in the gut with that mm-hmm. one because nobody else understood what that was all about. Nobody did. Like who, who like who, who, when you saw this Chris Paul interview, you like, that's what you got thrown out for, really? Until I saw that. And so that just shows you how how Chris Paul thinks, you know, he, he went and did research. He saw this and, and he used it. It was spared a moment. too. he has a high IQ. Oh, you know, no, no, nobody would have thought of that. And so uh, I take my hat off to him though. I, if I'm, if I'm the commissioner, I got to get my fine back. I mean, got, I mean, you've never seen nobody get kicked out for, for those words. It wasn't nothing that was demonstrative. No, no, he didn't, he didn't get all egregious. Yeah, exactly. So wait, you, you're saying if you're the commissioner, you, you got gotta to give you gotta give Chris his money back. Give oh, his so money go, back. Go, you get fined when he gets kicked out of game. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You get I'll attacked, get that's money. You get thrown out of game, that's money. Oh, okay. Okay. You gotta get your money so, back. So who who would be the person? Grant? No, it's uh Dumars, right? Whoever up there, he gotta get he gotta get he gotta get something back. Yeah, I mean, clearly somebody I, I, if I'm betting without knowing, Chris Paul. Kids probably told him at some right. point, like, oh, look, Dad, this is a referee that ref y'all games, huh? Right. Something like that. And he probably saw it based on that because I can't envision CP3 just sitting there on TikTok all day long paying attention to what pops up on his screen. No. But he got the information, and he, he was did. able to use it that much like uh, uh, Paul just said is got under his skin. 
Because he letting them know all you you trying to do is be famous off TikTok. So you're just going to do stuff to be famous. You know, I remember when we used to get into it with the referees or say something about the referees. The first thing the coach would say is don't allow them to be on television blowing their whistle because that's what they want to do. They want to sit there and go first down this or holding that. That's what they want to do. They, it's their opportunity now mm -hmm. to to run the show and empower themselves. It's like the security guard that tells you, you know, hey, man, you can't park right here. Well, I'm sitting in my car. It takes me three minutes. I'm just waiting on someone to come out. You got to move. You got to move. Agreed. I understand. It's your position. You have the power. Yeah. I'm just going to move right here. Then that's what's happening with Chris Paul. Tony Brothers has the power. So immediately, his first technical he got with 22 seconds in the fourth quarter. His second one was six seconds in the fourth. Why even do that? What you doing that for? This ain't the beginning of the game. The damn game is over with. What are you doing? That, okay. That's the power. All right, just for the record, Tony Brothers is not a TikToker. He did an interview with a TikToker that got posted on TikTok. So he's not, you know, some celebrity TikTok yeah, referee. Yeah, but if you on TikTok and you're doing an interview with a TikToker, yeah. that it's tells me right. you're trying to be a celebrity to so. be on TikTok. And I will give you this. Tony Brothers was extremely outspoken about his power. Because he said, I'm everything. I'm judge, I'm jury, that. executioner. I'm it. And Chris strong. Paul did not love that. That's strong. Well, that is very strong. But you have been ref by that man for many years. You didn't have any issues with it? I never had issues with Tony Brothers. But there are refs that you can tell feel that way. They have egos, man. I, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if one day we, we got refs jerseys in the NBA store. And you could buy a mm. ref jerseys. <laughs> In the NBA store, I mean, they, they, they're coming out wanting to be known and, like, just officiate the game. Don't officiate the player. You know, and I think it was some type, type of animosity there. Uh, yeah, because they're the calling, calling somebody a TikToker. He didn't call him out his name. He didn't call him out his name. He wasn't, he wasn't aggressive toward him. I mean, it didn't look that way on the TV, so... So then he told him to his face, you got too much power. That's what he told what's him. What's wrong with that? And you're gone because like. the game's almost over. But, so. what's, but what is wrong with the fact that someone tells you, man, you got too much power? What's wrong with that? Well, if you just got one tech for taking I, a personal I, shot at him, I think uh, he's going to blow the whistle and, and send you to the showers. Yeah, but that's because yeah. he... Is taking it too personal. Well, it's personal. I don't think I, if this was any other player in the league, I'm not sure you get thrown out, let alone a technical. It's probably only one other player. Draymond Green probably the only player in the league if he said those same words, the exact same thing would have happened. But just think about it. If it's not Chris Paul, if it's somebody else who just I, I've says said, these words. I've said courtsided games, and so have you, you too, Paul. You know the amount of stuff that I hear from the basketball it's players, the referees, it's, it's not, not even close. Even close. Fight not words, close. but not personal shots. These are if personal I, but, shots. But, but, but if I'm cursing you, dog cursing okay. you, that's personal. Right. Well, they stay in the game. Yeah. They don't get kicked out. No. Sometimes the referees ignore what they say and keep calling the game. Yeah. I mean, every night I watch LeBron or Luca or somebody, they just jump in the referee's face like, how could you? Even? And I'm like, because once upon a time, Commissioner Stern, back in the day, he tried to... to to get that out of the game, and he just couldn't stop it because it's ingrained. Can't control players' yeah. reaction in the heat of battle. And for him to do that, that's personal, like he said. That's, that has to be something beyond that. I would like to see how many confrontations they've been into or how many Maybe. texts that yeah. Tony Brothers has issued to Chris Paul. Yeah. We already know he has problems with uh, one other one dude. Yeah, I can't uh, think of the dude's ref name. Yeah, Scott uh, Foster, maybe. Scott Foster. Yeah, so, you yeah. know, but that CP, he rubs certain refs the he, wrong way. He, he does. Well, he rubs yeah, a lot it, of people the wrong in way. In 28 seconds, the dude get two fouls? I mean, technical fouls? That that's personal. That's personal. That's personal. Well, he that's got personal. personal with him. And I got to tell you, I, I think Commissioner Silver will not love this on Chris's part. I think he will let the fine stand because you can't question one of his referees' credibility. That's what he's doing. He's saying, you're not credible. You got too much power, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, for, first of all, he has too much power, okay? Because he's making decisions that just because somebody says you're a TikTok, if, he, if I said to you, Skip, stay off Twitter, is that, what, what is that? 
You gonna take that personal? Okay, but Keyshawn, somebody has to stay in charge out there, and you have to have that someone empowered so with credibility. So I can't say anything to you. Okay, if you, after one of your football games, had gone before the media and blasted some referee as as being out of control with too much power, I, I think you'd get fined like crazy for that. That 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 it, it, okay. There's two different things: a post game press conference saying that about a referee. You're going to get fined. Anytime you criticize a referee in a post-game interview, yeah. as you know, you're going to get fined. Okay. Me walking past the referee is saying, man, you got too much power. What, what does that do? I'm know, talking to you. But the thing yeah. is, too, I think it has I'm to I'm not talking. You're going to throw me out of an NFL game because I say you got too much power? Because I walk past you and say, stay off Twitter? When I, when I think about this, it had to be more than just you're a TikToker. It, it, it might have been some like you're an effing TikToker. Stay even if, I, like, like, even like if he said that. Like, like you're, you're, it had to be more than that. It, it, I can't believe that it was just that. He probably he, put the know. F in front of TikTok. Yeah. But even so, you throwing him out? Because like I said before, Paul Pierce has said some crazy stuff to referees as I sit courtside. Sure. To the point where I'm like, oh, my God, he needs to put tape on his mouth. Okay, but it wasn't personal shots at him being a TikToker or doing it, interviews. If I'm cursing at you, dog cursing you, like I've That's seen true. Kobe Bryant, I've seen oh, Michael man. Jordan, oh, man, I've too, seen right? them just uh, annihilate referees. Man. You wouldn't believe some of the stuff been said at the refs. I couldn't believe. That's what, that's like, what I'm I saying. can't believe some of the things. Based from me being out there compared to what was said, the things I've heard players say to refs and not get a technical at, at all, all. At all? For this to come off like this, it, it, it's... it's I, done, I, I, I wish I could that. say some of this stuff. <laughs> but Skip, I've heard some up. stuff. We go, to, oh, up. my God. Okay. Even I've heard on the football field, players going at the referees, coaches going at the referees, and the ref trying to explain to him, keep it moving. No, no personal and, files, none of that. And then especially of, of somebody of Chris Paul status. Refs got egos too. Now, if there's yeah, some guy do. coming off the bench saying these type of words, yeah, who is you? Get yeah. out of here. Get this. But Chris Paul, who Chris Paul is, he gets a longer rope. Hey, than, than, than most. Sean, nobody dog curses Scott Foster. They just don't because you want to talk about a quick trigger, quick whistle. Whew. You, yeah. You're just going to be gone, and everybody knows it. You just don't mess with yeah, it. I, I right. think that's too much, but okay. I understand what you're saying, Skip. I'm not going to disagree with you, but if, if a guy is calling you a TikToker, and maybe there's a word in front of that, whatever the case is, and, and then he comes back and say you have too much power, I don't think that that is a reason to be thrown out of a game. Man, it's just a question of amongst credibility. And the referee circle, they all talk. No, of course. Yeah. They all yeah, talk. Yeah, of course. And so they, they know. And I'm sure he has a, a bad, you know. A bad rap. A bad rap with them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He would. All right. It sounds like Adam Silver, speaking of, is ready to give up on the NBA All-Star game. Can't wait to hear what Paul says about oh. this. LeBron's fault. Mm. <laughs> Adam Silver says he was ready to go to U.S. players versus international players for next year's All-Star game until he saw what happened in this year's All-Star Game. Silver told Charles Barkley on CNN, it was a great weekend, but it was not a basketball game. I think maybe as opposed to trying to create a super competitive basketball game, which I'm not sure the teams or the players really want, we should do different things and make it a celebration of basketball. So Paul Pierce, you played in 10 of these All-Star Games. How would you try to fix the All-Star game going forward? Well, I'm sorry to say it, Skip, but I think the All-Star game is dead. I mean, when I look at a team score 200 points in a game, <laughs> I mean, 200 <laughs> points. But you know what? I said this before. It has to come from the top. You know, the stars of this league. Who are our stars today? LeBron, KD, Steph Curry. I, I consider them guys are the, the, four, the godfathers of the league today. Yep. When I played... The superstars set the tone. When you seen Allen Iverson going out there, playing as fast as he can play, when I see Kobe Bryant picking up full court, when I see these guys in the huddle or in the locker room, like, hey, let's get this money, let's go out there and, and, and whoop them. And you respect that. So I, I feel like if you have the guys who are at the top come to the locker room or, or come to the timeout, like, hey, if LeBron says, hey, let's pick it up, let's hoop. You know, we coasted. 
you know, for more than a couple of quarters. But we knew when the fourth quarter came, it was going to be a competitive game. Yeah. And that's where the All-Star game got fun. But we kept it close for the most part. So it's got to come from the guys of the league, Steph, KD, LeBron, taking it upon themselves to bring it back. And if mm. they're not willing to do that, I know they're older, or up in age and older. The money is out of control. They're making 30-plus million. So maybe that can factor into it. It's like it's not worth it. What if I get hurt? There's a number of factors. But mm. if it comes from the forefathers, the guys who lead this league, you know, Kobe would never allow that. No. You, you know, he, he, I see him pick a full court in an all-star game. He's blocking LeBron's shot. He's picking him up. He wanted to play against the other, whoever the other guy was on the other team. And that got everybody going. And that's what I don't see today. If I see KD and LeBron matching up and LeBron is, is up on him or KD is up on him trying to guard him, I'm sure everybody else will fall in line. So if it doesn't come from this guy, these guys, then I don't see it being competitive at all. It's kind of the same thing in the Pro Bowl when I was playing. The first three quarters, Skip, we want to get the, the Mai Tais out of our system in the heat in Hawaii. Yeah. The fourth quarter was turned up like a regular season football game because the money was on the line to cover your cost or what, and just being competitive. You, mm -hmm. you start seeing the, the veteran players start to compete or the young dogs with all high energy, like myself, we, I'm out there, man, I don't care what you're talking about. I'm getting ready to go do what I need to do. Yep. And when you talk about this international piece of – the all-star game, I don't see – okay, so if you go international, you got the Joker, you got Luca, Luca Shay, Sab Shay. Shay, Sabonis, who else? That, then you start to think about the depth. Yeah. The depth is, is the problem. The front mm -hmm. line guys, eh, whatever, ain't going to be much defense. But in the end, you're going to have a real issue with the depth. So I don't think that that's going to work either. But like Paul is saying, if you could somehow get the – the, the dogs, whoever they are, whether top it's dogs. the top dogs to buy in, okay, for that last quarter and play 75% of the way the first three mm -hmm. quarters but give us the maximum effort in the fourth quarter, you're probably going to wind up getting a pretty good all-star game. Mm -hmm. You know, that stuff that I was watching on those clips, I'm like, the last couple of years. Man, the dude jogging. Uh, I, 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 I didn't watch the all-star game. I wasn't, I sitting, was done I, after the I wasn't first sitting there watching this. The dude jogging down the court. Dude, fast breaking. He gets out the way. Watch the dude. Right? He go. Look, he just moved. <laughs> but then, but the older guys are sending a message to the younger guys. Because then, when I hear guys like Anthony Edwards, who's supposed to lead us into the next generation, say, "Oh, the All Star game. Nobody plays hard in the Nobody All Star game." Hard. I don't want to hear that from the guys who are next in line to lead this. And so that there is telling me that maybe we should do away with the All Star game. Yeah, can't do away with it though. Mm. Football did. They yeah, did. but that. So what yeah, I guess it's still, I'm not watching that, that flag stuff. You might as well. I mean, I, you can get I, I, hurt I, I, in flag I football watch, just as well. I don't want to watch them go for 200 points either. Yeah, you know? that's true. I mean, I want to see you guys match up. This is the best of the best. Let's yeah. see Steph match up with Dame or however this is going to go. Let's see the top that they position match up with each other. <sighs> this one lost me when Luka heaved one from like three quarters oh, court for done. no reason. I he just done. decides, I'm going to try he this. Threw it up. Yeah, just throws it from there. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's enough. Right. That that felt like the death knell of this all star, yeah. you know, exhibition. So back to your sport. There was a day before you when I used to go cover the Pro Bowls because they were fiercely competitive yeah. because it was conference versus conference and the fourth quarters were showcases and everybody was into it because the mantra was the harder you play, the healthier you'll stay. Yes, it's it's that's when true. you're just jacking around yeah. and just kind of going half speed. Yeah, that's when guys you get mess hurt. around and get hurt. Yes. And you're like, what was I thinking? Because my head wasn't in it. My focus wasn't there. But if you go out and compete at the highest level, it, usually you're almost always you're OK. Yeah. And I remember you, you brought up Kobe. There was one game and I'm trying to get the exact focus on it, but it was Kobe against D. Wade in the fourth quarter, and they right. got into it, and I think somebody got their nose broken. One of the two mm -hmm. got busted in the nose because they were competing at the highest level right. because that's what both of them were made of. The two yeah. top two guards in that the league. That was it. That going was at it. it. That's what we want to see. Yeah, going at it. I don't know if it's the agents. I, I don't know if it's – it could even come from the owners, frankly, and the GM saying, I, I don't want you to risk it. So it, it, now it's to the point where 
Friday night, I, heck, I'll watch the celebrity game more than I'll watch the regular all-star game. And Saturday night is the showcase. Mm. And that's fun for, I, I don't know about you, but I, I watch it like crazy. The skills, especially the three-point shootout and the slam dunk, as bad as the slam dunk has gotten, I'll still watch it because it's a showcase. And I, I can comprehend it. And I know they're trying as hard as they can try in those competitions. I know the right? collective bargaining agreement has already been done for the NBA, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. But what if they would have put, as part of the all the guys that are in the All Star game, because most guys that are in the All Star game are gonna make the uh, the three All NBA teams most likely, mm-hmm. right? Guys that are in the All Star game make okay. the All NBA teams. What if they put that as a check mark? Maybe in the saying, hey, if you on the Eastern Conference or the Western Conference, if your team wins the game based on something, 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 along with you making the All-NBA team is how you could get to the Supermax money. This, you know, is the most disappointing thing to me, Keith. I see in the summertime these guys come to the Drew League and play harder. Yeah, they do. I, I yeah, see that's them, a great point. I see them go to Jamal Crawford's they do. game up in Seattle and play harder than that. Yeah, that's a great you know, point. It, 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 and then you come to the All-Star game, millions of fans are watching, and you playing against the best, and you just lay down. I don't get it. You go and see summer league is played harder than this. Like it doesn't make sense. it's mind boggling to me that you maybe can they fly think, out. maybe they think summer league is the tune up to the regular season. If you want to see a better all star game? I tell you what y'all do. You come to L A in the summer. You go to UCLA. Yeah. You can go in there for free. Get you some popcorn. And you're gonna see a, a harder play game with all stars in there. Yeah, yes, a, that is true. It's some serious business. It, it's, yeah. it's serious yeah, in yeah, there. I know. It so does. I don't get it. I don't get it. Now, you'll be more disappointed getting hurt in the Drew League or at UCLA than getting hurt in the All-Star game. Yeah, but I've never seen anybody get seriously hurt I've never seen anybody get hurt in the All-Star game. Hurt in the All-Star. Either. It's the same thing with the no. Pro Bowl. I've never and really I, seen anybody get seriously that's hurt. That's what disappoints me. The guys have gotten hurt playing flag football at the Pro Bowl. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, there you Ripped go. Ripped open their knee. Yeah. Okay. But... Look, in the end, do fans really care that much about, do you have to have an all-star game? Does it help sell your sport? I, it, it, yeah, but yeah, it's an opportunity. I want to see it's that. Opportunity I want to see guys it is. that it's don't an opportunity for match up. a city to make money. It is. And it's an opportunity for people within that city to see players it is. all in one gathering yeah. that they might not otherwise get to see. The all-star game was always something that said, let's see who really is the best of the best. Let's see who – you can see it when all the best are on one court. Let's see who's there. He's a star over here, but he, he just he – doesn't, he doesn't mix with the all-star. He does not that good. Yeah. I want to see the best of the best compete at the highest level. And by the way, I should throw in, this also happened to the sport of baseball because once upon a time, they went at it as hard – I don't know if you guys remember yeah. the Pete Rose, Ray Fossey incident where he's barreling around third and runs over Ray Fossey and basically started the end of his career with his injury – and now it's easier to play baseball. It's just an exhibition. But but they're pulling, you know, guys are playing like one inning and they're out. And it's it gets hard to watch because they don't want to spin themselves in an all-star game where they used to play nine innings back in the day. All right, up next, we got to talk about those Rockets. They're about to win their 11th game out of 12. What are the odds they'll knock the Warriors out of the play-in? Here they come. Don't look now, but Ime Udoka's Houston Rockets have won 10 of 11. Probably will make it 11 or 12 tonight. Home against Portland, which is a 12-point underdog. That could lift the Rockets to within a half game of the Warriors in the final playing spot at 10th. So, Paul, can you see the Rockets knocking the Warriors out of the play-in? It's a possibility, Skip. I'm looking at their schedule. Five home games, five road games. Pretty tough schedule. They they have, you know, a few teams that they're going to have to struggle with at, Coast, at OKC. Uh, obviously, Dallas at Minnesota. But they got an April 4 game versus Golden State. They do. And and Golden State hasn't been, been showing they can play well at home. And then what you got to take, in, take into a factor that at the end of the season, like they say, those last three games where you think they might lose, teams may be resting. Yeah. Like they play the Clippers the last game of the season. And I think at that point, they'll know who they are, where they're positioned at in the playoffs, so they may sit their guys. So there's a great chance they can take over. I don't count them out. I mean, ever since Singone's been down, Jaylen, they've unlocked Jalen Green. They've they scored 
over 125 points in, in what, four of the last five games. And yep. then just coming off 147 points, mm-hmm. which is telling me that they found something. They found something in Jalen Green. They found something in all these young guys that they say, hey, this is how they play earlier in the year. They say, hey, hey, we can make the playoffs, and they believe it more than ever now. And they're going to make a run, and they're going to make it tough on Golden State there at the end to make that playoff, uh, that play-in game. So mm-hmm. I really think there's a great chance. I have to really look at the Golden State Warriors schedule and see. But even then, Golden State at home haven't shown me they can be consistent. So mm-hmm. if Golden State's going to play that way at home, then the Rockets got a chance to get in. I, well, mean, I, I believe they'll get in. Eme should be coach of the year if they make it. He should you, be. You, you figure Golden State has to stay the course to even hold to the number 10 spot. They still got teams that they got to play, so they're not in a situation. They got that pressure. We're now in a situation where now I'm looking down at Houston getting spooked where Houston's looking up to Golden State, but not by a lot. They're one game out. That one game swing is is like that. Tomorrow. They yeah, it's tomorrow. In. They could be they right can be there. In. Now, Golden State could be sitting at 11, arguing with one another, trying to figure out how to get back to the 10 spot. Mm-hmm. So when you start to think about it, you look at what e has been able to do in terms of guys get hurt. He's able to still navigate and coach situational basketball with these guys. On top of that, they're not they're young and they're not afraid. They're just out there just having a ball playing nothing basketball. To lose. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose at all. So I think they're going to catch Golden State. Because Golden State's still worried about, they still got to play the Lakers, okay? They got to play at a head-to-head on April 4th. They got to play Houston. And then in between, they got some games that they must have because if they don't, Houston going to catch them. And then, like Paul said, at home in San Francisco, they haven't, it hasn't been the best home court advantage for them. No. So I think, I think Houston's going to catch them, though. And I wouldn't be shocked if Houston catch the Lakers if the Lakers slip up yeah. in these next six games. I don't think they'll, no, catch, think the they'll catch the Lakers. I, I don't think, think I, if they if the Lakers slip up. All right. So in remaining strength of schedule, Houston has the eleventh remaining toughest schedule. Mm-hmm. So it's it's close to top ten ish. Golden State has the twenty fifth toughest, which makes it the twenty fifth easiest if you want to look at it that mm-hmm. way. So the odds are with Golden State here. And I do remind you, if we go back three weeks ago. Golden State went on this weird tear where they won 11 out of 13. Mm-hmm. And then that's what we talked about them earlier. I don't know what happened, but they don't look right to me right now. And Ime's team looks the rightest of anybody right now because it's hard to win 11 out of 12. And listen, I love the way he could. I'm a big fan of his. I like the toughness. I like what he, he was doing with the Celtics. Obviously, they had an issue that ended that. But, but that, that team that he was building with those kids in mm-hmm. Boston, he instilled a defensive toughness in them that they did not have. And it's manifesting again in Houston because they will get after you. And to your point, they won't back down. It seems like every night there's some skirmish they get involved in. And remember, this is why I would love to see Lakers versus Houston in a one game for your life, you know, one game to advance because we've already seen that yeah. movie. Okay. Well, have we? <laughs> yeah, that Houston's not afraid of us, clearly. They're, they're not. But remember what he made did. Them. Remember what he made did to LeBron out here in a game earlier this season? He just challenged him like like he he basically said, "If you want to go with me, let's let's do it right here." Right. Cuz that's right. what and again, do I think he could take LeBron right now? I don't think he could take LeBron, but but he, is he a, would he try? He probably would because that's what he's built like and that's what his team reflects. So, I don't know how they're doing this without Sh- uh, Shingun because he destroyed Wimby about mm-hmm. it's about 3 weeks ago. He he hung 45 on Wimby and just took him to the cleaners. Remember? And, and yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, their offenses are locked. Obviously, Jalen Green, the floor is open for him. This, this is the most exciting team in the league right it now is. to watch. It just is. And when you just watch them right now, I mean, no team is playing better outside of maybe the Celtics and Denver. I mean, I love to watch Houston the way they make so it. Right do now. I. So now, I mean, does it come to a question that they make it? Do you use the value of Sangoon to, to get better next maybe. year? Maybe. Maybe I mean, because the best they went and got stretch. Van Vliet, who was perfect for them because now they got a veteran head of the snake. Mm-hmm. And then Dylan Brooks, you, you can love him or hate him or whatever, but but he brings, he brings an some sort of he thing. Brings an yeah, like he, he fits what, they, what they're trying to do. So mm-hmm. all of a sudden, man, here they come. I, I got to mm-hmm. see Houston and the Lakers. Woo! That would be something. All right. The Clippers look sorry at home again. 
That's next. The Clippers gave us another home Sunday afternoon stinker, losing the first quarter to the Embiidless Sixers, 41 to 29. And then the game by 14. Clippers are now two and five at home on Sundays, one and two at home on Sunday afternoon. Paul, how do you explain this latest loss to the Sixers? It goes back to what I said last week. Give us yeah. back a leadership out there. Until mm-hmm. you get Westbrook out there on the court, I believe he's their emotional uh, leader. That it's going to continue to see these type of games, and especially this late in the season, you shouldn't be playing this when home court is on the line versus New Orleans. You shouldn't come out versus Sixers team without Joel Embiid. Did you have any trouble when you played for the Clippers with a noon or like an early it's start? It's always hard to play those early games no. for an older team. No. You're not no. used to <laughs> when I played for the Clippers. Yeah, when I, when I, sat, when I sat for the Clippers. <laughs> hey, for the old guys, the games is harder to get up for. Yeah. Shoot, that's not routine. You're not used to getting up that early because no. you don't wake up. You don't get a nap. You know, you just wake up and you go I straight know, to the, the game. the Sixers are basically playing at 9.30 in the morning on East Coast time. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they uh, I don't know no, what's wrong with the they're playing in the afternoon. Man. Yeah. Sixers? Okay. Yeah. That would be a 3 o'clock game. Oh, three, that's true. I'm yeah, but the they way. just, I don't know, maybe James Harden need to defend Kawhi again or something to get him fired up. <laughs> maybe that's the, the next step. Yeah, did you see what James did from three yesterday? He was 0 for 6. They, they all okay. played yeah. pretty bad. I Paul mean, George had five. Turnover. I don't know what no. I don't know what the Clippers are doing, but that's on them. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Oh, you, you, hey, did you enjoy on, that when you saw that score? Did it? I actually I thought was shocked. I actually shocked they was gonna win the game. I didn't know. I, I, I was shocked. I had no idea that Philly would I win. I lose by that much. Yeah. All right. That is it for today's undisputed. We are back tomorrow at 9:30 Eastern, and I can't wait.